Good morning. Yes. Hello. What a day. What a time. We made it through April Fool's Day. I can't hear my headphones. Yeah, they turned down the head. They turned down all the headphones this Why? morning. Who did? The engineers. They were like, "Oh, the headphones were so high, we turned them down." And then we were all. You know, like, now I can't hear my headphones. It, it look. That's full volume. Okay, Mars. Yeah. Why did they turn down? I. I don't have I'm usually headphones. at a twelve. Negative twelve. Now I'm at a negative six. I'm all the way up, and I cannot hear myself. Yeah, they came in. They were like, "Yeah, we got your mic set up." Today's the great debato. They were like, we got your mic set up, and the headphones were really loud. And we were like, on the couch? They were like, nope, all of them. We were like, okay. He's like, don't worry, turn them all down. So it's I guess, not necessary. I guess they turned down the master headphone controller. They're just trying to help. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but why would you do that? That doesn't make any it's sense. It's not helpful. We've been doing a show for like two and a half years with the same headphone volume. <laughs> don't you think that in the two and a half years, at some point, we would have been like, God damn, these are loud. Yeah, oh, we, my God. never complained. This is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. They're always tinkering with the studio. They like to in. tinker. They like to tinker. I don't know who is in here in the evenings, but they trash the fucking place. Oh, really? Everything. I, I see, come in here, there's food everywhere, no. there's shit everywhere. I swear to God. That's the issue. So they'll, there'll, be a little, oh, yeah. there'll be a little thing like that. Like, they'll tinker with something at night, and we'll go, can you just bring this back to the way it was before? And they'll go, yes. And, and you go, no, 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 yes, and, no improv exercise here. Just yes. Right. And then we'll keep going. Bring it back. Yeah, I don't know if it's my headphones. It sounds like. It sounds terrible. Is this mic super low? You, you sound, sound fine. To me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just great. the headphones. It's the headphones because I sound like I'm, my mic is off. You guys oh, okay. sound amazing to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's just your headphones. We can't hear anything. What's that? No, the They're headphones are all All of them. Up. They're super low. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jim Norton can't hear, and I'm at negative six instead of negative 12. <laughs> What's that? He's working on it. He's working on it. You know what this is? I bet it's April Fool's. It's like, no, just, that doesn't work, sir. They, they, I, I, look, this is full volume. I the whole, the whole myself. studio. You can't hear yourself. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, the whole, the whole studio, the, whatever the master control for all the headphones is, was turned down. Yeah. He was like, looking yeah. at Jim like, just turn it up, asshole. Yeah, like, I know. <laughs> Wouldn't that I be mean, great? <laughs> if Jim was just like, I have it all the way down. Oh. I don't understand why I can't hear. No, you got to turn it up. Oh. oh cool. Thank you. There's an up and a down. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I'm cranky today because I haven't slept. Why not? <coughs> you don't feel good. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I think I think that's going up. It might have phones. Yeah, a, 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 a little Oh, bit yeah, much. there it is. It's starting. The process is beginning. I feel it getting louder and louder. When yeah. Slightly louder. I'll say. Why would they fuck with it? It was fine. I don't know. I don't know what goes on. It was okay. I think that's good. No, it's not. Not, not good for you? No, that's full volume. I still can't hear it. <laughs> oh, boy. My ears are good. Right. Yeah, and I would say put the headphones on both ears, but you always have headphones on yeah. one ear, so that doesn't work, right? On one ear, it still stinks. It sucks over here. It, it does? So they, they All the it. volume's down. Yeah, they didn't need to do that. Yeah, well... Did you get fooled by any big April Fool's jokes yesterday? I did, yes. You did? <laughs> just just walking around all day getting fooled. There we go. This one's okay, yeah. Is it working now? Yes. You're, you're good? Well, yeah, there's headphones. Thank you very much. That's okay, good. okay. No, 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 I didn't mean like, are you good? Like, like that. I meant, are your headphones good? Yes. I'm okay. saying yes. Yeah. Um, it was working. Um, yeah. I pulled a big prank. What was it? I said... My spaceship didn't fly. You did it on a show yesterday. <laughs> you, you did the spaceship April thing. April Fools! Oh, good. Good, because you couldn't get it out yesterday because the voice was gone. So you decided to go with today. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, uh, a lot of people trying to get that viral April Fool's heat. This one, cake one, was okay. You like that prank? He laughed too hard at it. I mean, I this damn. guy... It was on Reddit. It was on the r slash funny forum on Reddit. And, you know, you've heard of a sponge cake, right? Sure. I enjoy a good sponge cake. Well, imagine if it was actually made of sponge. Oh, my God. I can't even. The laughs I'd have. 
Okay, well, I guess just visualizing it is not enough. No. Right, right. You, you, visualizing it. In my mind is not enough. I want to see it. Right, because visualizing it, you're not laughing that much, no. actually. <laughs> it actually seems like it's kind of like, okay, I don't know why you did that. But there's some guy, and he was given a cake, and it was covered in chocolate icing. So when you're giving a cake, given a cake covered in chocolate icing, one can only imagine that under all that chocolate icing is cake, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, but. <laughs> but let's check the calendar before we assume everything because if somebody gives you a cake on april 1st uh-oh you never know watch this guy as he uh or or listen listen along as this man finds out he's just a guy and he finds out that the cake he was given that he thought was a sponge cake is actually a sponge made to look like a cake He's cutting a big slice for himself. With the frosting? I know. Okay. He's trying to cut. Ah, oh, it's really difficult. Is this a joke? It is, ain't it? <laughs> it's a sponge! <laughs> Don't you wish you could have there's something in your life that could bring you that kind of joy? Yeah, I, I don't really remember do. when the last time I felt that good was. No. It cost me a lot of money to feel that good. It did, yeah. <laughs> Like the last time, just imagine being so joyful in your life. You know when the last time I felt that good was? When I watched that guy laugh. There's something contagious about that guy's laughter where you go, okay, I guess to me, if somebody put a sponge in front of me and said it was a cake, I go, this is stupid. But maybe I should have more of this attitude. No, imagine how much your life must suck when all of a sudden the biggest laugh you have is because there's a sponge with no, chocolate on it. You're right. You're right. There's how many so laughs don't you have? Right. There is everything is so by the book and predictable that the minute anything goes even slightly off the rails, you go, "Oh my god. Can you imagine how many people if this was his reaction, how many people he was walking around yesterday telling the oh, sponge and the everyone. cake story?" <laughs> everyone. Sat home at dinner. Oh, oh, work did they get me today? Uh, that was home. Do you think that's home? I thought oh, it was yeah. like a work cafeteria. Oh, really? I thought that was home. That's the way I saw it. Oh. Just sitting there going, oh, my God, you guys should have told me. Nobody warned me it was April Fool's Day. It's a sponge, not a sponge cake. And I cut <laughs> into it and it wouldn't cut. And the video cuts off. So who knows how long he was actually laughing at that for. He stabbed her. You think so? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, this knife, it can't go through the sponge. You know what it can go through? Ah. Yeah, that would be great if he killed her. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible video. You think so? Yes. He's got so much joy, though. I think. That's, oh, I love him. He's got so much joy. Do you think that's work or home? I took it as work. I mean, why at home would you have maps and stuff on a big wall behind you? Oh, I didn't notice yeah. that. Yeah, it looks and and yeah. Why would you have a a desk chair at a folding table where you eat cake? Oh, it's yeah, a yeah. terrible setup for a dining room if it's that's home. True. Yeah, you're right. But you know what? Somebody who spends two and a half minutes laughing at a sponge covered in frosting probably has a terrible dining room setup. Yeah. You know, so who knows? The fucking, the, the, the drollery that must be his life. Just a droll, <laughs> horrible you think, existence. You think it's a humdrum life? Oh. Uh. Yeah. He's he, having a good time. He is. In that Over moment, that. though. Having a laugh. It's kind of fun. We like to have yeah. around here. <laughs> he gets it. Sponge. <laughs> sponge. That would annoy me so much. Yeah, I feel like the sponge bit would be something they would do on the office yeah. and everybody would look at david brent going why would you think this is this is stupid why would you think this is funny nobody's laughing except david except that guy that guy loves it he loves it he's tickled he thinks it's the greatest thing ever i do there's something about it that i look at that and i go I wish the simple things did that for me. Yeah. but i guess in order i guess the trade-off would be if the simple things did that for you you would have to have nothing else. Just the simple Your things. Your bar for what's funny would have to be very low. Very low. Very low. And what you felt joy for. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It would have to be okay, we're just, I've just uh, um, submitted to the fact that life is not a thing 
where there's excitement. Right now. You know, an unpredictability. Let's not, let's do away with all that. How terrible are those headphones? I don't understand why somebody would just come in and turn down. That's exactly what happened. And he came in and he turned, he started tinkering with Jim's knob when it's like, that's the guy. He already told us he turned down the master headphone control. He knows he did it. And he's tinkering with your headphone volume. The same guy? It's like, that's the guy. And he was tinkering with your headphone volume because he didn't want it to seem like it was, he had to correct the thing that he did. Wow. He figured if he came in and tinkered with your volume, it's like, oh, these stupid hosts, they just don't get it. But that's not true. <laughs> that's not true in this case. Oh, these stupid idiot hosts. Yeah. If only they went to, you know, radio engineer school like I did, they would know how to hear out of their headphones. No. No. Right. Not our fault. Not our fault. We had our, our control. By the way, I didn't want to make a thing of it. I wanted to move on because, you know, but I'm at a negative nine instead of a negative 12 to get the same headphone volume. So the, the headphone volume was not 100% fixed. So wait a minute. What, what, who, who comes in at night that eats food and leaves food? I, whatever the shows are after ours, I'm sure it's not Bennington because we've, we've shared a studio yeah. with them forever. No, there's, there's shows after Bennington. Yeah, nice. What show is it? Everything. It, just random shows. I mean, there, there's no, this stu This is a studio like any other studio can be booked out by whoever. Oh, I wish I had known there was a show coming in last night because what I would have done is I would have gotten a big sponge. I would have covered it in ice. Shit. I would have covered it in shit. Okay, well, that's totally antisocial. <laughs> that's not welcoming. <laughs> I would have covered the sponge in icing. I would have <laughs> left it and it would have said, for the hosts to cut on air. And then I would have tuned into the show and just listened to the laughs. Can you imagine the laughs that they would have had? It's would, a sponge! It would, have murdered. <laughs> it would have been the best. Yeah, the place is always trapped. The lights are always fucked up. Yeah, they move the lights around. There's literally, I don't know. There's literally like grease from food on the keyboard. How there's do you ketchup do smeared on here. Because you know what happened? I'll tell you why. Because at night, the people who do the shows are generally not coming in every night. They're coming in a couple times a week. And they're generally not full-time employees. They're coming in just to do a show and be out. So instead of sitting there going like, okay, we're going to leave the studio in a, in, a, in a way that is usable they again. Don't give a fuck. Who cares? By the time they come back in two days or by the time they come back next week, it'll be fine again. Right? Well, somebody has to clean it up. Who cares? Yeah. Because over the course of two days, there's enough shows in here that nobody's going to leave it like this. So by the time they, if, they, if they're in on Monday, right. yeah. by the time they come back on Wednesday, everything will be yeah. fine anyway. Some so jerk off will have cleaned it up. Already. Exactly. Yeah. Those Can't idiots, we figure out who it was? Those idiots in the morning will take care of it. It doesn't I mean, people matter. People are leaving food smeared. That's for them being bugs. Well, now we've got these uh, very well concealed cameras hanging in the studio. It really is. They're obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> we have, they install cameras in the studio that are dangling down from the ceiling. And uh, I would say they're. They're bigger than my head. Yeah. And right. I have a very big head. Yes, you do. So the idea that they're that big, but at some point they'll be usable. I don't know if they're usable right now, but they're able to be, you know, controlled remotely. They can go up and down. They can go side to side. They're, it says 4K on them. So I would imagine they sure, record sure. in okay. 4K. But what I'd like to do is turn these cameras on now. Where's the guy's office who's going to be doing these? Way down the hall. Here in the building, but that way at the other end of the hall, like around the corner. How many shows are you gonna be doing? I don't know. At the same time? Mm, no, I mean, you know, you'll you they'll pick depending on the priority of what's going on on what show, and then we'll have access to the footage so our guys can edit it. So will these at least be running though? Because if they're not yeah. paying attention to our show, we yep. can have okay. Yep, they'll be running all the time once they're once they're good to go. That's my understanding. There's only two of them. Three. There's Three. one behind you. It's hidden. <laughs> oh. There's a concealed oh camera God, right behind you. Camera. Yeah, it's huge. It's it's enormous. We just tweeted a picture of the cameras yeah. at Jim and Sam Show on Twitter. Yeah. yeah, it's enormous. Look at that. There's like a little. Uh, it's it's a it's a robot that's just sitting there next to me. It looks like I have a robot just sitting next to me the whole show now, looking at me. Yeah, <clears throat> staring right at you. And it's gonna move, right? It will. They will have access. I believe they they will be able to move. Yes. It looks like the flight of the navigator. That's yes, that's the movie <laughs> I was thinking of. It What's looks that? like I'm about to fly the spaceship with the flight of the navigator robot. That was like an '80s uh, kid sci-fi movie. Oh, it was okay. the best of the '80s sci-fi movies. Great. Better than Star Wars. By the way, I realize I'm <laughs> terribly unfunny today. I'm just not feeling well. 
So I that's okay. The morning is is it's still early. I apologize. It's only know. 16 minutes after the hour. Okay. No, I know, but I can feel I have no wit whatsoever. For the whole morning? At least for now, I feel like a okay. dud. But we could, we could ramp it up. My mind is not working. I was up all night. Was, my mind is not working funny. But that's okay. We could ramp it up as we go. We can. We'll get there. I'm just letting the audience know. I'm aware of it. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm doing great. We love you regardless, though. It doesn't matter. <coughs> yeah. I mean, don't cough directly into the mic, but we love you. <laughs> we, we do love you regardless. And the audience knows. Like Miley Cyrus said. Okay, spit. I mean, you could hear the spit. You turn off the mic if you're, you yeah, just, can't do that. You could hear the loogie into and the... He didn't even hold the tissue up no. to his mouth. It like, no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, you heard it. You just... That's how you get it out. I took three steam showers last night just trying to loosen this chest stuff. It was horrible. Yeah, but the chest stuff is because of what you do after the steam shower is all the swallowing. You got to no, stop. No, not yesterday. No. No. <laughs> no, you paid yourself. No, I didn't swallow anything yesterday. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> But they know. The audience knows. Okay. I'm just saying I'm aware of it. It's the climb. It's not about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. Wait, this is going to be today's show. The theme of today's morning show is going to be the journey to Jim Norton's funny. And we're going to get there. I promise you. Let's go get two podiums that don't match. Well, the other one broke. <laughs> it broke? <laughs> Unfortunately, we did have two podiums that matched and one broke. How? I don't know. It fell apart. They told me that they got him yesterday, and immediately one broke, so they had to get a third one. No, I mean, it was so the, the, the big one? Yeah. I think there used to be two of them. But? But, but one broke. Right. But not like yesterday. Oh, I thought, I thought <laughs> no, we no, got no. our two podiums, one fell apart, and so we got a third. No. I see. Well, the reason we have podiums in here is very I mean, that's important. just like the company's podiums. Oh, I see. Those are official like, Sirius XM podiums? That's right. That's good that we're taking it that seriously, that we got the official Sirius XM podiums in here. Yeah, those are used for, like, CEO just talks. That's right. We we took those from the, they do, when they do the quarterly, uh, when they do the quarterly employee announcements, they use those podiums as well. That's why there's fingerprints all over the one. But the reason we have podiums in here is because today is the great, it's the great debate it's a big, it's a big deal today. Is hot dog here yet? Hot dog and uh, handsome Rob will be later on on this morning show. They'll be arguing uh, Beto. You know, Rob has an unreasonable hatred for him. I just thought it was funny. I think Jim, you got a kick out of it too. Yeah. That Rob just out of nowhere started sending us these emails in the show prep about how awful Beto was, as if it was a national news story. Right. When in reality, you know, he's scouring the internet for everything negative that he can find about Beto. He's anti-Beto. Then Hot Dog, who wasn't even in that morning that we discovered this, is listening at home, and he starts sending all kinds of shit texts talking to Rob about what an asshole he is, and, and then, that night... Sends an email to Rob with a whole bunch of anti-Trump emails or, or news links saying, here's your show prep for tomorrow, Rob, because he was so upset that Rob was so anti-Beto. Right. So I didn't know. Like, I don't know enough about Beto. I'm not from Texas. Right. I'm not a smart. I'm not a smart man. I thought Alex Jones did a great interview with him. That was actually, and a lot of people think that too. He referred to the, his subject as Beto. <laughs> he was actually interviewing a pile of of horse manure. Oh, was that a mistake? That, a, a, a botched booking? <laughs> I, yeah, I think I think Alex Jones just made an error. He thought it was Beto, but it turned out to be a pile of horse manure. Um, and so, yeah, so I don't know as much as I should about Beto, but I'm prepared to learn. And I think today's going to be the day to learn. We're going to take it very, very seriously. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have Rob and Hot Dog, and we're going to figure out whether Beto is a suitable candidate or not. And that's something that... Right? Well, no matter how well or poorly either of them do. Yes. I don't know what that says about the about Beto. Well, we'll learn is the thing. Like, we'll be here to ask these questions. Okay. Is Beto good? Hot Dog will tell us why, he, why he's good. Rob will tell us why he's bad. Whoever has a more convincing argument, I think that that's how we'll know. You know, they're going to present information and data. They've known about this for a couple of weeks. They've been preparing Hot Dog... He sent a tweet out uh, over the weekend that I retweeted. Has he been preparing? He had like a whole, it looked like to me, the cover of a whole packet that he had been making. He just sent the cover out because he didn't want to, you know, tip his hand to anything. But he sent out, there it is, right there. The Great Debato opening statements. He's got his opening statements ready. I saw, you know, Rob has opening remarks and everything ready too. These guys are very prepared for this. Good. You know. So yeah, Rob's got a binder. Wow. Binders are important. Look Binders at that. Are important. They, they make it feel official. 
Exactly. Podiums and binders. Podiums and binders. And I believe it's like hoagies and grinders. <laughs> and suits. And and suits. And you got a suits. suit? Of You're not course. wearing one right now. No, not yet. Because it's not official capacity yet. Correct. I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> Where is your suit? It's good to know. It's, it's, it's in his. It's in his uh, anti debato headquarters. Do you think his suit is two sizes too small, like all of his other clothes? No, I would imagine. Oh, it's too big as far as his dad's suit. Yeah, I would imagine that when <laughs> Rob wears a suit, it's too big for him. <laughs> so his dad's. I think when when Rob wears regular clothes, they're too small, and when he wears a suit, it's too big. Because he does. He's not a suit. He doesn't wear a suit that often. Not but we'll see. These are all questions that will get answered. For dad and lad lunches. At the Great Debate, though. Do you at, think at that... the country club, he'll wear a suit. If do you I think that probably say, put my suit on. You think dad gives him a suit for the country club lunches? Sure. Well, there's a jacket involved, yes, of course, <laughs> at the country club lunches. Of course, you can't get in without a jacket. And sometimes the sleeve length isn't exactly right, but they haven't been tailored yet. Correct. I see. I see. That makes sense. His mother pins them up. <laughs> she does. Nobody can tell. Nobody will tell, honey. Nobody, Nobody will, will be able to tell. Father doesn't want his kid looking like a little fruit. He does. But it's tough. It's twink shirts. It's really tough. Uh, did you fall for any other big uh, April Fool's jokes? A lot of people were trying to get uh, their April Fool's stuff down on the internet yesterday. Um, you know, there was uh, one of the sneaker companies said that Kanye's album was hidden on a thumb drive in the soles of the new Yeezys. So you have to cut the Yeezys open to get the thumb drive out. But I don't think anybody did that. They were like, no, it's not. I fell for that. Not, you did. You cut open your Yeezys? That's right. Was there any album inside? Yes, there was. Oh, so it wasn't an April Fool's joke after all. No, it wasn't. Oh. No, I, um, a friend of mine I was talking to, and she told me the Queen of England died. Did you believe her? Yes, I did. I mean, I guess, right? The Queen of England's old. It was a terrible prank. And then what did she say? April Fool's? Yeah. Did you laugh? No, I didn't care. <laughs> no, why would you? I didn't look it up. It's dumb, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know that uh, some people were upset about McDonald's because McDonald's sent out that they were doing a pickle burger. And then they said, upset. it's April Fool's. Yes. But people were like, oh, I really wanted the pickle <sighs> burger. McDonald's' big April Fool's joke was they said they were doing... Uh, uh, I think it's in Australia is where they did this. McDonald's Australia. They said they were making the McPickle, where it would be uh, pickles, a whole bunch of pickles on a bun with cheese and tomato and and ketchup. So ketchup, cheese, and then a ton of pickles. And that they go awful. Well, yeah, that's what I thought too. Too many pickles. And they go April Fools. We would never do this. And then there were people on Twitter going, "Oh, what the hell? Now I want a McPickle." Doesn't that look good though? Like you're just not not a McPickle. <laughs> like two McDonald's cheeseburgers? I don't eat burgers. Oh, you don't? No, so it's not an issue for me. You never had a McDonald's cheeseburger? Mm. I don't eat any burgers. <clears throat> no burgers. Do you like them? Love them. You do? Oh my God, yeah. Would you want a McPickle? Probably not. It's too much, right? Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Like two, two pickles on a burger, like just enough. But you like it to have a, the meat on it. Yeah, of course. Not just pickles. Nope. Right, okay. Okay. Although I do feel like this will end up being one of those things where it'll start to, you know... Pick up uh, virality. Maybe. It'll start to go a little bit viral. And then there will probably be a limited time only pickle burger at McDonald's. Because why not? They have cheese. They have ketchup. They have a ton of pickles. They have buns. Pickles. You could just do that. Just go to McDonald's and order a ton of pickles. Somebody would order a McPickle just to be silly. Of oh, course. Pickle. They, they would hate it. Put it on YouTube. Giggle. Trying out the McPickle. <laughs> secret menu item. It's not a secret <laughs> menu item. You just asked for it. Right. Yeah. They have a bite. And they go, this sucks. Yeah, hey. who wants 30 pickles? It's too many pickles, no they'd way. say. <laughs> no, you can only sit on one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are cut up already. They're slices. Oh, yeah. I'm They're I'm pickle my slices. Arm. I should have... I No, that's all. I should have said slices. I want a McDonald's cheeseburger so bad I could scream. Oh, they're the best. Uh, Travis, would you send uh, somebody down to get Jim a McDonald's cheeseburger? Rob actually just left to go get Jim's food. Awesome. Okay, make it a McDonald's so cheeseburger. I'll get him some cheeseburgers. Get a couple. Yeah. I'm, I'm going you, for the crew. You're going to join? Right now. Oh you my join God, in? Yeah, if we yeah. have burgers, fuck yeah. Yeah. They don't serve them this early. Sure they do. It's breakfast. That does matter. Yeah. You can get a burger for breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. You shouldn't. You should. Why not? You're, you're not feeling well. You're sick. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. You're not exactly. feeling well. You need nourishment. Uh, you need the cows. Hey, can you... Yeah. Good text, Travis. You need the calories. Hamburgers, too. Hamburgers? Couple. You, need, you need two hamburgers, two cheeseburgers? Well, no, I'm just saying... <laughs> Do you want cheese or or no cheese? Uh, one, okay. 
We'll do. We'll, <laughs> you are so out of it. We'll do a hamburger. We'll do a cheeseburger. We'll do a couple cheeseburgers for Troy and whatever you want on the side. I was inside by good, eleven last night, and I literally I would lay my head down, and then all of a sudden it was like my head was filled with congestion. It was like somebody poured liquid into my head. Did you try propping your head up on pillows? I not only did I sit up, mm -hmm. I was actually sitting up like the fucking elephant man. I was sitting up. I went to my closet. Wish I had known that. I would have taken all your pillows. I just want to be normal. <laughs> should watch you suffocate on your giant. It would have been preferable to what I was doing. Yeah, I can't. I woke up probably every five minutes coughing. Um, I had a box of tissues in my bed. I was just spitting into the. Well, what's really wrong disgusting. with you? Just a cold, uh, or uh, whatever. And I went and got um, out of the closet. I got my fucking neck pillow that I fly with. So I sat all the way up in bed against my wall and just was laying on my neck pillow. See, that's the type of stuff I want video of and pictures and things like that. That oh, must look so stupid. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it did help me doze off a little, though, the neck pillow. Yeah, I would Sitting imagine, because like you're propped up, but you're still not like I was so hot. My eyes were burning. My sinuses oh, were I burning. Oh, I thought you meant sexy. No, I know. Obviously, yeah. yeah. Hey, Jim, I hate to interrupt. Rob is wondering if this is in place of breakfast or in addition, addition. to breakfast. Okay. In addition, okay. clearly. Um, so I, I was, uh, were you nude as well? Always. What a sight. <laughs> what the a three sight. steam showers made my fucking, uh, made, made my uh, body temperature all fucked up. Right. So it was hot. It was a miserable night. So I'm sorry. I'm just really sluggish. Yeah. It sounds miserable. Terrible. Probably not doing anybody any favors by coming in and giving us all your germs. It's too late. And plus, come on, man. It's, it is what it is. <laughs> That's not a good excuse. <laughs> Just take everybody down. Everybody comes in sick. Right. Yeah, everybody comes in sick. You're talking to a mic. I'm not hugging you guys. That's a, that's also a shame. I'll take a hug. Yeah, you would want a hug, wouldn't you? If you wanted to hug me right now, I'd hug him. I didn't do the cellar last night. Why? I was too sick. Oh, oh. But that was because you just wanted to rest, not because you didn't want to get everybody else sick? Nah, you know, it's funny. I think of that a lot when I'm on that disgusting microphone. Like when somebody else oh, is sick in front of me. I see. You have your own microphone here. I think it helps your immune system, though. I'm really yeah. talking to these germ things. Clearly not. Look at you. No, I don't get sick that often. You're sick right now. When's the last time I got sick? It's been over a year. Yesterday you were sick. I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, so, you know, I don't I don't trust you. No, Jim's pretty good. He very rarely gets sick. He's sick right now. Yeah, I know, but okay. So there you go. Okay, you're all, I just shot a hole in your entire theory. You didn't say never. You said rarely. Yeah, I said rarely. This is one of those rare cases. Okay, I don't want to hear that. I rarely get sick. Really? Last time I said that, I got sick the next day. Yeah. When's the last time you were sick? About a year ago. Well, I hope, yeah. I'm, I'm usually good for one a year. That's not like rare. That's what people, sure it that's is. What out of 365 days, no, that's pretty gets, rare. People get sick more than once a year. No, absolutely. A lot of people just get sick about once a year. No, my wife gets sick more than once a year. Does she? Yeah. That's because she's with you. <laughs> okay. That's that's yeah. Yeah. Every time she wakes up vomiting, it's not because <laughs> she's sick. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, she's turned over. Sick. Yeah. She looked over at yeah, you and woke started up from vomiting. A nice dream she was having. <laughs> <laughs> sick of his shit. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's a different type of sickness. So the fucking the teft monster yeah. is laying there. Yeah, she just thought about how much better life could be if she just stayed in Grand Canada. I mean, she's not wrong. You mean a nice Canadian boy? Sure. Maybe a Mountie? Farmhand with large genitals? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rob's calling. Instead, she's just overlooking at Travis. Yeah. She always hopes when she wakes up in the middle of the night, it's after like 3 o'clock in the morning Travis after is, Travis sorry, wakes up. Travis is getting the news right now that they don't serve burgers. Only breakfast. Morning. Told you. Burger King does burgers for breakfast. Ah, oh. I'll take a Burger King hamburger. <laughs> Hold on, tell them Burger King hamburgers. Tell him you go ahead and hit up Burger King. BK. Yeah, grab a couple. Yeah, yeah, a little something for Troy too. Travis, he's hungry. That's right. He's feeling it. Then there was uh, Tom Brady. Did Tom Brady get you with his April Fools? He did. He oh, was he's said, retiring. He said he's oh, retiring. I was at McDonald's. I was so angry. What did you say? Just I didn't appreciate it. You know, it was McDonald's Australia. It didn't apply to you anyway. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> you were mad at McDonald's? Yeah. And is that why? Because they got your hopes up or just it's because? That's not, not appropriate. I see. I see. That customers rely on McDonald's for menu items and, and reliability. And you sit there and for them to toy cruel with your jokes. emotions. That's not. It's cruel, you find. We don't go with cruel jokes. I see. I see. Yes. Uh, uh, Tom Brady, first tweet ever. He <sighs> tweeted out, I'm retiring. In my spare time, I'll be tweeting LFG. What, what is LFG? Does that stand for let's fucking go? Let's fucking go! I think so. Yeah, I'm sticking with my thing. Uh, and then he tweeted like an hour later, was this a bad joke? You well, let's, take the fuck, heat. let's fuck Giselle. That's true. Maybe that's what. That's what I'd do if I was married to her. Especially if you're retiring? Yeah. What are you going to do with all your spare time? Well, what do you think? Closest Burger King is 
half a mile away. Perfect. Got it. Is it downstairs? <laughs> that one closed? No, dude, no, that one closed a long, a long time, ago. time ago. How about a breakfast sandwich, a Big Mac something? You know what? Jesus Christ. A Big Mac something? That's a burger. We just <laughs> Big Mac is not a breakfast sandwich. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I meant to say an egg McMuffin. You oh, know yeah, what you do? Yeah, we can get you egg McMuffins. Yeah. Troy? Tell him. Please. Okay. <laughs> you know what you should do, Travis? Have a Chick-fil-A breakfast. Jim, Chick-fil-A breakfast? For the room. Sausage, sausage, sausage biscuits. Oh, yuck. Oh, I hate sausage. biscuits. Egg McMuffin's better. What's the difference between a McMuffin's yeah, yeah. better? Thank you, Jim. What's the difference between a McMuffin and a biscuit? A, a sausage biscuit. Biscuits are dry and fucking horrible. That's There's true. no moisture. What are you talking about? Fast food biscuits all have butter in them. They're terrible, though. Biscuits are terrible. Jim, egg you good for two egg McMuffins? <laughs> I, I won't eat two. I'll eat one. I won't even eat All right, well, you wanted two burgers. So. You can get two. Yeah, you can have one. Oh, I will. You're going to get uh, Egg McMuffins for the boys, Travis? <laughs> Rob just wrote, for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> that means Rob wants a free Egg McMuffin. Uh, let's yeah, yeah, I'll buy it. I'll, whatever, you, just get whatever you want. <laughs> All right. Big spender. I'm going to buy McDonald's breakfast. Yeah, look at Jim. Man, oh, man. Five. Hash browns, five. Too. Hash browns Hash too. Hash browns, too? Yeah, man. Hash it's not good to eat when you're sick, I'm sure. Browns, but. too. Oh, and did you take my order, Travis? What was your order? I said, I'm going to get me a Big Mac, a fry, and a Coke. I... I'm going to eat moon rocks. It was yesterday. Apple fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> That's a soundboard. Well, he's got to get the drop because the voice isn't isn't holding up today. Still. <laughs> so you know, the last thing we want to do is I tried have. It. I tried it yesterday. I, was, I sent Jen a message. I, I couldn't even do it late in the day. I tried it yesterday. I started the show with one. With what? With one of your April Falls's. Did you? Yeah, did you hear it? Hang no. On. Just the garbage ones from yesterday? Oh, God, yeah. I didn't hear them. They were bad. But... Yeah, yeah. April Falls. Just... <laughs> 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 Let me hear that again. April <laughs> Falls. <laughs> oh. Oh. Were you happy? It sounds painful. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a great day for that to happen. It was a great day. Great day for that to happen. So yeah, Tom Brady. Has after after an hour, after an hour, Tom Brady uh, tapped out on it. That's when you can tell he didn't want to take the heat. I'm sure a couple people were like, "Oh, Tom Brady says he's retiring." No, 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 it's an April Fool's joke. It's an April Fool's joke. I swear. Anyways, was that a bad joke? Yeah. Well, he didn't want he didn't want people to get scared. And then Justin Bieber oh, made was the Biebs joke. The Biebs April Fool's prank was that he posted a, an ultrasound on his Instagram. People thought that he was expecting a child with with his wife Haley uh, Baldwin. Joel Osment. No, I don't think Haley, I don't oh, think he's married sorry. to Haley Joel Osment. Although I would love to see Haley Joel Osment and Justin Bieber have a baby together. I think that would be one talented baby. Sure would be. But Good yeah, looking can act. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But instead, uh, yes, he tweeted a photo of a uh, of of an ultrasound. Except somebody pretty quickly found out. That that photo that he tweeted of the ultrasound, he got it from the Wikipedia page for ultrasound. So if you just look up ultrasound on Wikipedia, it's the same photo. Um, and I think pretty quickly, his wife, Haley Bieber, Baldwin, whoever, was like, oh, very funny. So she didn't want people thinking she was pregnant, I guess. She spoiled it. Why? I don't know. People get scared. I love a good prank. You do. You love pranks. What was your? You didn't do any April Fool's pranks, though. Yeah, I did. What did you do? I told my doorman that I was going to the. Uh, I was walking out of my my apartment. I told the doorman I was going to the supermarket to grab honey. And I went to the other store and grabbed an RX bar. That sounds like a lie, not a prank. No, it was a fun April Fool's prank. Did you tell him? Did you show him the RX bar on the way back and go April Fool's? Yeah, I was like, look what I did, and he's like, what? And like I said, I, I don't get honey, and he goes, what do you mean? He forgot the conversation. I, said I was going to get some honey. He was like, "Oh, right, right." He had immediately just forgotten. Well, that was nice. You would ever. It sounds cool. It sounds nice. It sounds cool. That's but good shit. Good news, by the way. What's the good news? Is this animal that raped and killed this poor jogger was found guilty? Yeah, it's, that's like a New York story. What happened? Back in Queens, she was just. It's, it's such a horrible story. Yeah, because she would jog with her dad all the time. Right. And her dad, had, his leg was fucked up or whatever. He couldn't do the one time he couldn't go. Yeah. In Howard Beach or whatever, she's jogging and she would jog through this area with like reeds or woods or whatever. And this fucking this dirt bag just I think happened to see her and just popped and out, raped her and killed. Her. It's just awful, horrible. Because 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 you, because the dad always goes with her. Yeah, and the one time it's a he nightmare. Jogs, like he'll never ever get forgive. Him. He's not going to forgive himself. No, 
I just want he should. It's not you know, of there's course. nothing you could have done, whatever. But no, that's one of those things that you just never never forgive yourself for. So it's front page news of New York's both our papers. Yo, yeah. Wasn't it a mistrial the first time? I think yes. so, yeah. yeah. But um, And in the this is the story that we talked about when it first happened and they were actually like didn't more people like questioning what was going on with the dad at first? Yeah, I, you had I to. Think so, of yeah. course you have to the dad's the suspect at first because yeah. He, uh, he's the one. I think he found her. Yes, there was a search and rescue, and I think the dad found her. Because, and it was the one day that he hadn't sure. gone. But yeah, they they quickly got rid of that. Very day. very quickly. But you have to check. I mean, you know. I wonder if it gives you closure yeah. when something like that happens, and the the right guy gets caught, and he gets sentenced, and he gets sent <laughs> sent away. I heard tape from the uh, from the trial, and there was massive cheers in the courtroom when the verdict came back guilty. Just like I mean, it was like a, 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 a football game. It was just everybody was so happy that justice had been served, and I get that. But I wonder, especially for those absolutely closest to it, if there is any kind of if even that will bring closure. Now, I mean, the dad they said when they were interviewing him in the post that he was smoking a cigar on his porch, saying we're elated. Like, but that's in that's like. All right, in, in comparison to being suicidal and depressed, yeah, you know, you're not you're not truly happy. You can't get over that shit. Yeah, I wonder if it's one of those things where you're just never going to be as happy as you were never. when she was alive. There's never. just always going to be that thing. You, you probably won't even be close to being that happy yeah. again. Yeah, you'll have moments where you feel good, but the rest of your life is ruined. And that guilt, the guilt of being associated with it—that's well, horrible. Yeah, you're just you weren't there, right? Listen to the reaction. That, uh, that the courtroom gives when the verdict is reached in this trial. In a way, by authorities in handcuffs, having been found guilty in front of a packed courtroom, we were thinking deliberations might not even continue until uh, tomorrow morning, but uh, they came back with a verdict tonight very quickly, somewhat unexpectedly. This case, of course, goes back to August 2016 when Karina Vetrana was jogging in Spring Creek Park in Howard Beach. They finally ended up arresting a suspect after a lengthy search in February of 2017. That was Channel Lewis. Last fall, a jury could not get beyond a five to seven guilty verdict. Five jurors thought he was guilty. Five uh, thought he was not what guilty. What changes? And in fall when you've got like one trial, the jury's, jurors can't figure out their heads. And in this one, real quick, they all came back and said, we know exactly Different what happened. people, maybe the evidence is presented differently. Maybe the second time through, the prosecutors know what the defense is going to say. And they can cut it off before, I'm guessing. But he doesn't look like a murderer. Like, when you look at him, he looks like a gangly, awkward kid. Yeah, that's the thing. He looks young. Yeah, he, yeah. he's a gangly, awkward teenager. Like, you could see how a defense attorney could build sympathy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you want to hear what the reaction in yeah, the courtroom yeah, was? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty. Guilty! Yeah. You do need those moments in life. By the way, listen to the juror saying, guilty. Yeah, like it's a presentation. You need that. Everybody, every now and then, you need to have one of those moments in life where you realize that there are things that are fair. Because you start going like, oh, my God, especially after a mistrial. I'm sure that the family's going, oh, my God. We know what happened here. We know it was him. We know it was him. And there's no justice. Let me hear that again, please. You know, you have to believe that this is just one of those moments where you go, this is, how, yes, yes, the world is moving for once in the right okay. direction. Yeah. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty. Guilty! Look at performance. Yeah. No, yeah, guilty. She had a lot of fucking family. Oh, yeah, a lot of support. A Some lot big of big Italians support. in that family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he would have been in trouble if he'd gotten off. <laughs> yeah, he would. Yeah. <laughs> you hope. <laughs> you really do. So, yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, it ended... It's still not a happy ending, but it ends in the best way possible. Uh, of, of that terrible thing, I mean, the guy is guilty. He'll probably go to jail for for life. You see that uh, uh, they they figured out who they think. They have a suspect in who shot uh, Nipsey Hussle. Right, yeah, and then there was, like, violence at the wake, a stabbing at the wake. What yeah. the fuck is wrong with people? Well, it was, like, one of those... It was, like, a public... Oh, okay. Wake. It wasn't like it was like sure. a funeral home or something. It was a, a, 
a public way again. They won't. I haven't read anything about what a fight broke out over, but there was some kind of fight. Somebody got stabbed with broken glass or something like that. And as the fight broke out, everybody sort of fled and people got trampled. A whole bunch of people ended up in the hospital. Somebody got hit by a car is a disaster, which is really shitty because everybody's been saying the thing about Nipsey Hussle that makes him different from all, a lot of other musicians and hip hop acts and stuff like that is that Nipsey Hussle was one of these guys who was super, super, super active in his community, who was actually trying to make things better. He stayed in his community that he grew up in after he got famous. He's, uh, everything you read about this guy, he was a good dude. And he was right. trying to make the place where he grew up a better place. Where did he live? Uh, Crenshaw, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he stayed there after he got famous, which most people, you know, you're the first chance you get, you're leaving. I wonder why the guy shot him. They got somebody, right? Yeah, they said all they're saying is that they think that uh, they knew each other and this was deliberate. It was like a uh, an assassination or whatever it they was. They didn't get him, though, right? They just identified him? Identified him, yeah. Yeah, yeah they don't have him in custody. Yeah. They're, they put his, his mug shot out. As if to say, like, if you know this person or if you find this person, we, we're looking for him. Shot in the head. His name's Eric Holder. Yeah. Eric. Eric Holder. <laughs> oh, he wasn't he? Didn't he work for Obama? It's not the same <laughs> Eric Holder. Eric. <laughs> Look. Yeah, this one's a different Eric Holder. I don't think Obama's... They arrested... Eric... Noggle. Apple Files... I think that Obama's Eric Holder had a different neck tattoo. Oh, yeah. That's how they. That's how. That's how we know. Um, so yeah, they're saying it's this guy. You know, they haven't said it was what it was. If it was gang related, if it was you know whatever it was, but there were gang ties. There's a, a, a grand conspiracy theory that revolves around the fact that uh, Nipsey was working on a documentary about the guy who had reportedly found a cure for AIDS who also got killed, but I think that that goes pretty deep yeah. in conspiracy theory. I don't think that that is yeah, anything Nipsey's to do with it. Yeah, Nipsey's documentary didn't get him killed. No, By the way, so it's either. weird what gets people killed, though. There was that mobster killed in Staten Island. Mm -hmm. I guess he was like the head of... What, oh, Frank my Kelly. God. Was that? Frank Kelly. Was it the G Gambino family? Yeah. He's yeah. a big-time um, mob He's guy. Yeah. And it's like, the mafia, apparently the mafia is back, because when the mafia was was, like, really powerful... We didn't know who they were. Once you know who the mafia is, that's when things start but to disintegrate. But I had never heard this guy's name before. But that seems like, I, to me, it makes it seem like the fact that we didn't know who he was. He's probably more powerful than, than we had any idea. There's still five families. He that's was, crazy. He was killed over, um, it, the guy set it up, he came and he, ran, he rammed his car outside. And then when the guy came out of his house, the guy shot him. But it was a setup because Callie was against this guy dating his niece. That's it. And that was the guy. Like, the guy was dating his niece, and I guess he was a little off. And then this guy didn't like little. it. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, he's <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's all deep into, like, QAnon. And, oh, is he? Oh, what is yeah. QAnon? That, like, right-wing conspiracy stuff okay. online. He wrote, like, MAGA on his hand in court. and Oh, right. His lawyer's trying to say that he was brainwashed by the internet. I think oh, that's God. what happened. You I think, think so. He I just think wanted a girl and he shot somebody. That's it. I think he's the one that uh, attacked Jesse Smollett. Could be. I think I mean, so. You he, can get from Chicago to Staten Island. That was, and that, that was before Frank Alley was murdered, so anything's possible. It was, right? Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. I think I might have cracked the case on this one. Yeah, he. I mean, you have to be cra some level crazy. When you find out that the head of a, a, a mob crime family gets killed and it's not mob related... It's There's just a, it's a personal, personal issue. Reason, yeah, yeah, the guy's nuts, but that doesn't mean that it's an excuse for what he did. He uh, he did himself in too, because the way that they found him was when they were checking for fingerprints. They found his fingerprint on Frank Kelly's license plate, which he picked up off the ground and gave to Frank before he yeah. killed him. <laughs> oh my god! So if he hadn't done that, no, just stop with the theatrics and yeah, get the job. They still would have got him. They would have, but not as easily. License plate tracks, they would have uh, surveillance footage, they would have found him. In and it. if the cops hadn't gotten him, some people who are, you know, even more yeah. dangerous for this guy would have oh. gotten him, and it would have been quick and severe. He's but, not going to have an easy time in jail. No, he isn't. Do you think Frank Kelly has friends? Probably one or two. The late Frank Kelly. Yeah. Do you think he's got a couple friends in Maybe. jail? Maybe. Do you think he's going to be able to convert them to MAGA? <laughs> 
By I think the, he may have a tough time. By the way, this uh, let's say the girl got killed getting into the wrong Uber. I mean, she wasn't her Uber; it was some guy. And this fuck again, he stabbed her and killed her in North Carolina. Yeah, oh, but, they, but they have foot like they have photos of the car. They have photos of her waiting for her Uber. You can't do a fucking thing now without a they have camera. video of her getting in the car. Oh, there's yeah. video. Yeah. Good. And people yeah. say, but cameras are bad everywhere. Maybe in some cases, but in a lot of cases, the cameras are great everywhere. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, there weren't they weren't able to catch that Jesse Smollett attack. So I was pointed the wrong way. He picked yeah. the wrong one to stage. That's in front a bummer. Of. What? Unfortunately, no, he how was much, innocent. Yeah, that was. Uh, how uh, much is it going to cost him? Chicago bills him. <laughs> I don't know. I think that I think that I think that Chicago will make sure that their law enforcement fees are plentiful. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Did yeah, he ignore that bill? It was who Jesse? Yeah, I think he'll try to. I don't think it'll work out. Bring it to collections. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. This girl in North Carolina, she got in. She got murdered because a guy pulled up to pick her up, and she said, "Are you my Uber?" He said, "Yep." And that was it for her. And now they're, you know, I mean, I think about that sometimes. You know, we take for granted because we're guys. Oh wow, that's her. how how easy Uber is. But I mean, if I were a woman. You hear about these these terrible, and it's not like Uber is a company. It's just ride sharing services. You're getting into a car with a stranger. Yeah, but you look. So you are with a cab anyway. So at least look at the license plate. That's all. But cab drivers are licensed and go through background checks and go through a whole thing. I mean, you don't hear about this happening nearly as much right, with right. cab drivers. For guys who just grab an app and go like, okay, I'm going to start driving my car around. You know, it's scary, man. It's really scary. Let me ask you, does um, head, neck, face, and upper body, leg, foot? Injuries is what you're what reading. an animal. Found the car, liquid bleach, cleaning wipes. It's just... I just needed him to clean his car, though. The child likes were activated, so he probably locked her in. She probably knew she was being taken. I've got a certain set of skills. So it's like too, late. too late, Liam. That's sad. Not help. Yeah, man. But then I mean, on Fox, they're giving tips for Uber, and it's like, no, just look at the license plate. Well, it's not even like... It wasn't Uber. It's not Uber. Like, Uber tips aren't going to help you. You're like, yes, the way you do an Uber is you go in, you have them say your name, so you know that it's not somebody else's Uber or, or right. somebody pretending to be an Uber or whatever. You don't just go, are you my Uber? You say, who are you looking for? And you don't say, are you? And ask them the driver's name, because they'll just go, yeah. You say, oh, who are you looking for? And they say your name, and then you go, okay, I'll I just get look it. at the license plate. I don't need a discussion. Or you can go on the license plate, or you can go with the make and model of the car. Like, they do yeah. make it. But she's yeah. probably drunk, you know, after a party or whatever. You're just getting the wrong fucking car. Yeah. You're not thinking. You're not thinking. We're so taking for granted. to strangers' cars now. Or the first couple Ubers you take, you probably go through all the processes. You know, you probably check everything. And then you get to a point where you take it for granted. Like you said, you get so used to just getting into a guy's car. Whatever, I'll jump in. But you also, I mean, you hear a lot of stories about legit Ubers that, you know, are assaulting people. Uber drivers. I haven't heard that, but I'm sure it's happening. Yeah, it's happening. Especially for, what, for sexually assaulting? Or mm -hmm. How stupid with their name and everything? I know. It's really dumb. And then I they, know someone who got into an Uber recently, and the guy was being creepy and looking at her, and he asked her her last name. Dude, Lisa Ann was in She's here. Like, I'm not telling you that. No. Lisa Ann was in here, and she said... That she used to have, I don't know if it was Lyft or Uber, whatever, one of these ride-sharing services. She said that there used to be a guy who would just kind of drive around where she lived, who had picked her up once. It was Lisa Ann, the porn star. Yeah. He would kind of just be in her area as much as possible so that whenever she ordered an Uber, he would be the first one to grab it and say, okay, yep, I'm going to pick her up. And then show up to her place. She said one time... He was actually jerking off while driving oh, her to the airport. Oh, no. Yo. And she's like, I mean, what am I going to do here? Am I going to turn this way, into a federal case, or am I going to... I just said, oh, no. Like, I can't understand why a guy would jerk off in front of a porn star. Yeah. I mean, as an Uber driver, you probably shouldn't do it. No, if you're driving a porn star as an Uber driver, on a professional level, if you're driving a porn star to the airport, no. Did she report him? You should not. I don't know. I, I think she reported him. She said, I believe, that she had reported him to whatever service he was with. And, no, I don't want that. Thank you. Uh, and it's a vagina. <laughs> I'll take the other one. Yeah, you could, you, Troy can have mine. And it was one of those things where he got a warning or whatever, and he just he showed up again. 
Even after the warning, so, you know, what are you going to do? You have to go, okay, I'm just going to do car services going forward. I'm just going to spend the money. Or you can do the... Jerking off. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's bad, man. People, How do you think you're going to get away with that? People are crazy. Guy, guys, there are some guys that have it's just sicknesses in these dudes. He would go sicknesses. home. He would watch her movies. Yeah. He would probably watch in the car right after she got out of the car. That's the girl. Yeah. I mean, stalkers have always creeped me out. Dude, Taylor Swift's stalker just got sentenced. He's getting like two years in jail. He should get a lot more than two years. Nah, I'm fine. Thank you, Rob. He should get a lot more than two years. These stalkers, because, I mean, I don't think, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a mental defect. I don't think that he gets his two years and he's going to learn stalking was bad on that. Well, I'll never do that again. I mean, every stalker that you ever actually hear about that's a legit stalker is just among the creepiest people in the world. He broke into her house. The Bajork, remember the Bajork video guy? It was like one of the first like violent internet videos. The guy that shot himself in the face. He sent the video to no. Bjork. And then uh, uh, you ever see the documentary about the Tiffany stalker? I think we're alone now. No. Oh my God. What a fucking creep that guy is. There's a whole documentary about this guy who's just been stalking the pop star Tiffany for, he did it for years. He's a creep. Didn't he kill her or no? No, Tiffany's still alive. She's done the show before. Oh, who's the actress that was killed? There was one that was killed by a stalker who shot her when she opened the door. Yes, I remember that story too. I don't remember who it was, but all, I mean, stalkers are the, put him in jail, put him in right there. There should be a pedophile stalker wing. Yeah. Where you, you should, just lock them up and that's it. These crazy people just locked them up. Yeah, you should get years for that. Years. Creeps. Yeah, and it's so violating. Taylor Swift's serial stalker who broke into the singer's New York City apartment and ransacked it last month has accepted a plea deal with prosecutors. A plea deal for two years. He's what? 22. He pleaded guilty to violating his probation, which stemmed from a previous break-in at Swift's home. So it's not the first time he's broken into Taylor Swift's home. He faces two to four years in prison at his sentencing on April 15th. He was arrested March 7th after using a ladder to climb into the t onto the terrace of Swift's Tribeca townhouse and smashing through a glass door with a concrete block. He was charged with stalking, burglary, and felony criminal contempt for violating an order of protection. Last month's break-in, the third time Alvarado had forced entry into Swift's home, having been released from jail for an earlier invasion just 30 days earlier. So you go to jail... For breaking into tw Taylor Swift's house. Within 30 days, you break into Taylor Swift's house again, and you don't think that... You shouldn't get out of jail for 8 to 10 years for doing that. At least. 8 to 10 years would be a gift. You're, guess you're guess when such you such a violating fucking creep for doing shit like that. You know when you knew that Nikki Six had a real problem with uh, heroin? When he did heroin, and then he went to rehab for heroin... And then he went through the whole process, and he got clean, and he immediately went home and did heroin. And it was like, okay, this guy's got a real problem. We've really got to do something about this. Imagine if instead of heroin, it was stalking Taylor Swift. Because that's where we're at with this individual. You don't think he's going to do, okay, two to four years. He said he'd do it again. Of course he's going to do it again. Should be kicked out. He should be locked up forever. He's 22. Lock him up until he's 40, and then we'll, and then we'll reassess. What does he plan on doing when he breaks in? I don't get it. He's just being an asshole. Like, hurt, is he trying to hurt her? No, he just lays in his bed like a her bed like a fucking. Creep. Yeah, I think he took a shower one time. He wants to be close. He's he not even like a fan of her music. He's a fan of her shower. I guess he he's he said in an interview he's like I'm a I'm a hip hop fan. Yeah, of course he and is. And I'll probably do it again. He said like, just lock him up forever. Just lock him up forever. It's enough is enough. Like, how is Taylor Swift? Supposed to live comfortably. Yeah, why does she have to deal with this shit? You got all the money she in the some world. Real psychopaths, too. Real psychopaths. She attracts fucking crazy people. That's why, man, everybody thinks that they want to be that famous. Everybody thinks they want to be that famous. They want to be one of these famous people that have their Twitter armies. The Nicki Minaj Bumblebees or whoever they are. The Beyonce Beehives. The uh, uh, Taylor Swift Swifties. Yeah. I don't know what any of these groups are called. They're called Swifties? Swifties, I think. I want to say Swifties. Maybe they're the Taylor Swift Swiffers. I think they're the Swiffers. But with that type of obsessive love, where you have a fan base that will go to war for you at a moment's notice, when you have that Twitter fan base 
that are so loyal, you are going to get psychopaths on the other end. You're going to get extreme people in that group that take it too far, that are totally out of touch with reality. And just, you, know, you, you don't want that kind of obsession. You don't want this kind of fame. I, I, I bet there's nobody, nobody that has that level of Taylor Swift fame that is actually sitting there going like, oh man, this is fun. We have to have security all the time. All the time. It's not fun. There's like a level of fame that I would imagine is fun, but the fun cuts off and then it's not fun. And, you know, I mean, even on a personal level, how does Taylor Swift feel fulfilled? Like, she has to be the biggest thing in the world. Anything less than that yeah. is less than what she did the last time. She can't even run into a gas station and take a shit. She can't take a shit in a gas station, Jim. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Anywhere. It could be one of those weird, you know, way off base road stops. Remember, weren't you with us, Troy? Didn't we drive in Montreal? Didn't we have to go like, we, we tried to get off to go to a gas station and we had to end up going like 12 miles off the road or yeah. something like that. Remember that? Yeah. Well, if we had gone there, we went like, maybe it wasn't 12 miles, probably like three miles. It was pretty though. far off. It was yeah. pretty far to the point that we were going, what, what are we fun, doing yeah. here? Right. We got three miles. It was like in the Adirondacks. No cell phone service. Highways miles away. One gas station. Taylor Swift can't go in there without every without creating a mob scene. You know what I mean? Like that's that's a crazy level. She can't just go to meet her boyfriend's mom. No. She can't just hop in the car and go somewhere. No. No. She can't hop in the car. It's a to-do every time she does anything. But yeah, I wonder if she if you asked her, would you take away this fame and go back to being a normal person? It's a great question. Would she wouldn't, no. Probably not. She's performing in football stadiums. Even that doesn't, I mean, at that point, is that, is it funner, is it funner to perform in a football stadium than a theater, or is it just like a, a an ego stroke, you know what oh, I mean? It's still, it's a massive level of success. Yeah, it is, but like I said, where do you go from there? You live very comfortably, I'm sure. If you can keep people out of your apartment. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, you gotta have... Iron walls. You have to actually, all the security that Jim has, you know, to protect himself from ninjas that propel off ceilings to get to his terrace because he's worried they're going to break their legs and sue him. Like, those are actual concerns of Taylor. Taylor Swift, that might actually happen. All the stuff that we make fun of Jim being worried about could actually happen to Taylor Swift. There could be a ninja that propels down off the roof, lands on her terrace, breaks their ninja leg, and sues Taylor Swift. That could happen to her. Doesn't she have cameras? I would imagine that she does. It would be a ninja propelling onto your patio. I don't have to worry about that. It's great. No, I mean, because she's away. She wasn't even there when it happened. No, I know. Luckily. But, like, you know, when you hear something outside of your house, you know it's probably nothing. If you're watching a scary movie, if you're whatever. But you know it's probably not somebody targeting you, right? Imagine if every time you heard a noise... It was like, ah, actually, odds are that probably is somebody targeting me. Like, that doesn't seem that... She has to live on the top of a very secure building. That's right. Like, with a door guy, and because she is who she is, an extra security guy in the lobby, like a cop that they hire, off-duty cop. Mm -hmm. you know, All the time. 24-hour security. Yeah. Her best friend is probably her bodyguard. You know what I mean? Because that's the person that's around them all the time. Remember, somebody broke into George Harrison's house and tried to... It stabbed him. Did they stab him? I, Why? I'm sure. I don't... They just... I mean, why did somebody kill John Lennon for no That's reason? a good point. Yeah. That's yeah, got to I mean, be scary when they're in your house. Ozzy's house has been broken into, too. I think he had to wrestle with a guy. Ozzy did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that recently. When he was younger, or was years. he an older, still an older person at that point? Yeah, George Harrison stabbed in the chest by an intruder. Oh, my God. Where do you go? You just have to build an iron wall around your house at some point. You need to get to a certain level of fame... You have to build an iron wall yep. around your house. And then people will go, oh, he's an asshole. He's antisocial. No, I just don't want a, a burglar to break into my house and stab me in the chest. Who's the guy that did it? Probably somebody that was like, oh, I love Here Comes the Sun. You know, like just some guy who was sitting there listening to Beatles music nonstop and then decided since he's a maniac, this makes sense in my crazy head and nobody was there to lock me up like they should have. That's probably the thought process. As the day wore on, there were suggestions that the suspect uh, 
uh, had uh, nursed an irrational obsession with the Beatles. Shocker. As had Mark David Chapman with John Lennon, whom he shot and killed outside. That's what I'm telling you. The, when you have fans that are that obsessed with you, there's always going to be one of these in that group of obsessive people. You know, the one they're all wearing your T-shirt and they're fainting when you're around and they're following your every move and they're supporting everything you do. Sure, it feels great. Everywhere you go, somebody's being like, you're the greatest. Awesome. But you have to know that for all these people saying you're the greatest, there's somebody right there going, yeah, you're the greatest. I can't wait to break into your house and put this knife in your chest. It's terrifying. He hates the Beatles and even believes they are witches <laughs> and takes their music seriously. He started to wear a Walkman to play music to stop the voices in his head. I mean, what do you do with a fucking asshole like this? Lock him up for good, for keeps. Oh, no, we'll give him the proper medication, and we'll just trust him to continue on his course of medication. Yeah, I'm sure he's responsible enough to handle that. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, look what happened with Charles Manson. He heard Helter Skelter, which was about a roller coaster. Mm, I think it was about, uh, I think it was inspiration to start a race war, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think that's what McCartney was thinking. Oh, no? no. <laughs> you don't think that that's what was in McCartney's head? He was trying to make a song to compete with The Who. <laughs> you think McCartney was sitting there going, where the hell did you get that from, Charlie? That's, I wasn't talking about that at all. And he made a shitty song with the Beach Boys. And Charlie? He was like, Charlie yeah, did, with yeah. Uh, Dennis Wilson. Yeah. Way to go, Dennis, by the way. Way to pick him. Yeah. That's why Brian was the brains before he fried him. He was the brains of that group. Yep. Brian's not sitting there making friends with Charlie Manson. Brian was uh, in a robe, unable to leave his bed. Yeah, that's that probably had a lot to do with it. He was taking his uh, he was taking his meetings in the pool to make sure that nobody was. There was a wiretap. <laughs> that's right. Was he really? Yes, oh, he yeah. did. Yeah, he went nuts. He made people do. Yeah, all of his all of his meetings he did in a pool. You know, paranoid. like and I mean neck deep in the pool. Yeah, he was paranoid schizophrenic because he didn't want. Yeah, he didn't want his. Uh, you didn't want his meetings being recorded. And then, you know, when it was time to record an album, of course you need to put a, 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 a piano in a sandbox. How else could you play? Why did he do that? Because he's not like the beach. He wanted to put his feet in the sand. <laughs> did it work? Yeah, uh, he made some of the greatest music of all time. Well, at that period, it was kind of over for him. He, did good he was supposed to make Smile. Right. And he did Good Vibrations, which would have been Smile, which is a brilliant masterpiece of a song. And then he just fell off the edge. He did. Yeah. He did. But then you hear some of the psychotic stuff that was going into Smile at the time, and you can kind of see. I didn't like Smile. Where a paranoid you schizophrenic. Like he went back years later in the early 2000s and finished the record. And I, I, I think it's brilliant, but it's pretty fucking far out. But like that song that has all the uh, uh, fire sirens and everything yeah, in yeah, it, yeah. like you could see if you're a paranoid schizophrenic, all those noises in that song... You could see driving you to the point of madness. Well, and with that song, he was burning wood inside the studio so, he, so the band could smell the wood burning. Smart. And then a, a building down the street burned down, mm -hmm. and he thought he caused that. By burning the wood. Yeah. I see. Like voodoo. Yeah. I see. That makes sense, actually. And it was also Charles of Wisconsin. Yeah, this is... A, this is he's yeah. right. Charles, what's up, bud? Hey, bud. Uh, uh, keep in mind, too, it could also be someone you know, like David Spade and his personal assistant. Yeah, David Spade got uh, attacked by his personal assistant. Attacked and robbed, right? Yeah, yeah. Was he robbed? I think so. I don't know. He's definitely attacked. Yeah, he, he had, uh, he had, uh, David Spade has talked about he had to pull a shotgun on the guy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm more strangers. You're more worried about strangers, you say? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I You can usually... Well, look at... You know what? By the way, do we have so, this debate? So, Wait, didn't... Selena Rob, was... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Rob's bringing up a point before... For Jim. Didn't Jim take a ride with a stranger in Ireland? He did. He, he jumped into a stranger's truck. That's yeah, actually I was a fan. Point. He goes, I'll give you a ride. Jim was hitchhiking in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, you can't say you were scared of strangers. Yeah. He's a, a livery truck. You know who's afraid of strangers? Selena. Yeah. A lot of good that did her. Goddamn crazy people are all around you. Samantha in Buffalo. I mean, the scariest one of them all is poor Jesse Smollett. That's I mean, true. he's just trying to get a sub, and look what happened. That's true. He's trying to get a Subway sandwich. Little does he know, racist, homophobic, Nigerian MAGA supporters are following him around Chicago. It really was a shame. It really was. You're right, Modern Samantha. day lynching. Yeah. Um, right there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It never ends. It's history. It's moving in a cycle. It just repeats itself and repeats itself. Do we have to break? We have this. What time is Robin and Hot Dog doing their thing? I mean, they're here. They're ready whenever you want. Yeah. 
Yeah, we should break in and do that. Yeah, we'll take a break. We have to decide if Beto is uh, is the right candidate yeah, for America. The great debato. The great debato is happening, and it's happening today. We have uh, all kinds of material set up for it. It's going to be uh, it's going to be quite an extravaganza, and I think we're going to get a lot of answers. I hope so. Personally, of course, Jim and I will moderate it. Um, I'll be in San Francisco Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm healthy enough. I will be there. I, mean, I feel like shit today, but I'll feel fine by Thursday. Oh, good. At least enough well enough to perform. <laughs> um, and I'll be on uh, the WWE Network and WWE's uh, YouTube channel all weekend, starting on Friday, NXT TakeOver. You got Hall of Fame on Saturday, WrestleMania on Sunday. Get that WWE Network free for the first month. Troy, you got something going hey, on? Mind if I plug something real quick? I don't, I don't, I don't mind. Foxwoods Whoa. Casino Shrine tonight. Black Caviar. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be great. Stay tuned. The Great Debato. Coming up. Commences when we return. Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. There's a, there's a buzz in the air. First of all, we have Danny Tamborelli and Mike Morona. Television's Pete and Pete <laughs> coming in in a little while. But before we get there, we've got a lot to do this morning. We're still on a journey. I believe that Jim has found more funny, certainly than he started with. I think that I think that you're well on your way to finding your funny. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I think so. The funny is definitely increasing. Oh, very much yeah, so. Well, it very have much so. any worse. Okay, okay, that's one way to look at it. Um, my mind is just not working, and my voice is not working. Let me tell you something, Jim. Your mind not working. About 10 times better than most people's minds when they are working. That's what mother would say. That's right. That's right. Um, well, you know, we've got a, a, a couple of uh, young boys here that want to... They, they have completely differing opinions. Yes. And they want to educate the public. I just don't know which one to believe. And uh, I think that uh, they could provide a very valuable service, not only to you and I, Jim, but to the listeners as a whole. You know, Beto O'Rourke. Has or as some people call him, uh, what is that Beta? They call O'Dork? him Beta a lot, yeah. Beta O'Dork is that what Kennedy calls him, Travis? Beta O'Dork. Beta O'Dork. By the Nailed way, him. That's since, a negative. Since Biden is having all this shit with pictures of him, you know, fucking hugging too close or kissing heads, Eskimo kissing, putting his fingers in people. Mm-hmm. You know, now that Beta looks like he might be more of a, uh, a I think Beto, so. Looks like he's more of an option. I think that that's right. Biden's in trouble now. Rob seems, right, handsome Rob, he seems very, I don't know if it's nervous or he just uh, doesn't like the guy, but he talks about maybe Beto, both. maybe, he talks about Beto more than any other candidate. Hot Dog, the mysterious Hot Dog, on the other hand, uh, staffers, both staffers on the show, he, he's over here saying that Beto is a great candidate and your President Trump is the one who's the problem. Hot Dog has an easier job because you're, to bash a sitting president, no matter who it is. Is easier because there's a track record but, than there is for Beto does not have a long track record that you can go after. But this isn't the great debate. This is the great debate, ho. Hot dog, to me, I believe, hot dog's job has nothing to do with the president. So he's not going to be bashing Trump. He's just going to be praising Beto. This is about Beto and either selling us on why he's good or why he's bad. Yeah. We don't know much about him. I don't know anything, you know. So I think this is perfect. Should we? Why don't we start by bringing uh, our our debaters, debaters, yeah, our debaters uh, to the platforms? Is that are they ready, Travis? Oh yeah, they're coming in right now. Okay, who is coming in first? Rob. Okay, then uh, uh, let's welcome first uh, the person who will be arguing, debating. On the side of uh, the Beto's, that that uh, Beto sucked. The Beto is not good, ladies and gentlemen. No music, huh? Oh, you want to do like the? Because this that, is that's it. an this intro. Is, okay, this is the intro. We're okay. introducing them. They're coming into the room. The time has come to find out who is Beto. Will it be the conservative kingpin, handsome Rob, or the man formerly known as Hot Dog, Agent Snowflake? Questions will be answered, tears will be shed, and legacies will be cemented. This is The Great Debato. Oh my god, that is so exciting. Chilling. That is very, very chilling. We're really going to get to the bottom of something here. This is serious. I think so too, yeah. Yeah. 
part and, of me at first I thought, who cares what these two dopes say? But now right. I'm like, wow. Now you care. This is going to be heavy. Right. Well, I think that we have, uh, we also have entrance music for each uh, candidate as well. I mean, not candidate, but uh, debater as well. Is that right, Travis? That's right. Okay. Well, then why don't we uh, first welcome the person that will be uh, arguing against Beto. Yeah. Let's welcome in Handsome Rob. What if God was one <laughs> there he is. Handsome Rob. Just Look at him. He's How we doing? That's red, white, and blue, huh? Look at you. You got a pink blazer on. Mike, uh... Is your mic turn on? It's a little operator. Mike. No, it's on. Mike, no, that's this mic. Yeah, it's on. Mike, first of all, Mike 4 is Jim's mic. No, uh, Mike 2. Yeah, Mike 2's on. Check, 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 check. Hello? Yep. It's on. You got to talk into it. You can hear me? Yep. No, okay, cool. I can't hear you. It doesn't sound I good. I can't hear myself. No, it's wrong. Yeah, you have to talk into it. You have hello, to talk. hello. Okay, yeah, all right. It's on. Yep. That's it. All right. All right. <laughs> that sounds weird. Hold on. It's just because there's so many mics on. I think it's but you have to mic. talk. You have to talk into the mic. Ah. See, there, there. I think we discovered the operator error. <laughs> yes. It's up. Okay. Yep. There it is. <laughs> talk. Let's. Uh, yeah. We'll talk into the microphones. We have uh, handsome Rob. Oh, there it is. He couldn't see properly because he had his American <laughs> flag sunglasses on. That's that was the issue. That's right. Okay. No problem. No problem. Um, are you ready for this, Rob? Absolutely. Okay. Good. Good. Yes, I'm good. prepared. Well, then uh, let's bring in Rob's opponent, who will be debating on the side of Beto, ladies and gentlemen, the mysterious hot dog. There he is. You don't have to come all the way over here. Right, no, he's coming official. over. Okay. okay. He's being a man and shaking hands. Yeah, he's shaking hands. Shirts That's tucked right. in. Look yeah. at him. Now, he doesn't have a jacket on, unfortunately. I want to uh, talk to the people. I see. I see. Uh, you know, I'll put my sleeves up. You know, do you have headphones? Talk, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I want to talk to the people of America, pull my sleeves up, and kind of get down and dirty. You know what right. I mean? Right. Your sleeves are rolled down. Well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring him. Up. I see. Okay. As, as okay. The, you, know. you don't want to be stiff in a suit. Is my jacket bothering you? There, you can move it if you want to. Just a little bit. So, yeah. So it's not. That's in your okay. space. Yeah. Good morning. So it's not in your personal space. Are you ready for this hot dog? Are you? Are you prepared? It looks like you have no notes. Oh no, I have my notes. Oh, right there here. they are. Oh, okay, no, I didn't no. see them. Okay. We're, we're good to go. Yeah, I just didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, you know, <clears throat> everybody's strategizing differently here. So, uh, well, yeah. well, how is this going to be structured? Who starts and how much time does each one of them talk? Well, I, I figure that you and I, of course, will be sure. the esteemed moderators. You know, and I think that uh, very esteemed. Thank you. We will give them uh, each maybe. 60 seconds to start an opening statement. Yep. Oh, boy. And then we will ask uh, each one a question. They will have 60 seconds to respond. And then if the other person wants to, they will get a 30-second rebuttal. Now, why do you say, oh, boy, for 60 seconds? Yours is longer? It's a lot longer. <laughs> Should we do 90 seconds for the intro? How long is yours? Let's do two minutes. Two? Okay. <laughs> well, okay. A hundred. Okay, you know what? Let's not, let's not time the intro statements. <laughs> All right. All right. Should we just let Sounds and, great. And if Jim and I, the esteemed moderators, decide yeah. it's time to wrap it up, <laughs> we will just simply do that. We'll let you know. Wrap it up, Box. How long is yours? Uh, it's a page and a half. Okay. So, <laughs> so okay. So you is. guys, you guys really prepared like essays to start. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, well, it's an opening statement. Should we flip a coin? Yeah, I got a coin right here. Uh, Kern, flip a Kern. Okay. Uh, uh, hot dog, uh, Rob, you're here every day. Hot dog isn't. Why don't you call it in the air? Heads. Uh, we got tails. Okay. Tail. Now, uh, yeah, tails. Hot dog. You decide. Would you like to go first, or would you like your opponent to go first? Uh, ladies first. <laughs> okay, uh, I like right. that. Well, right. trash talk to a start little, us off. A, uh, a little gender shaming. <laughs> it's not what Beto would be about. Ooh, good point. Yeah. Beto's now, about all the good stuff. I also know that uh, advertisement. You guys each prepared an advertisement on your side. Oh yes. Do you want us to play the ads? Before this, should we? What do you think, Travis? Should we play the ads before or after? Uh, I think maybe maybe first to start. Yeah, to give yeah. us a flavor. Okay, let's play uh, Rob's against Beto uh, advertisement that he and his, I guess, super pack. Yeah. Yes. Prepared. Let's see it. We all want America to be great, right? Wrong. Beto O'Rourke, or as we call him, Beto, says he hates America. That's right. <laughs> and how can we trust this thin-haired 
beta male to lead our nation when he can't even control his own arms. Fact. Beto wants to give your vote to a legal alien. <gasps> Fact. He plans to allow doctors to perform post-birth abortions. Even more true fact, if elected, Beto O'Rourke will require one out of every five kids to be gay. gay, 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 gay. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to save America, join Handsome Rob at this year's great debate to say, fuck you, Beto. <laughs> fuck you. Paid for by the Anti-Beto Super PAC and distributed by Handsome Rob Media. It's very good. Very good. I mean, of course, we're not, uh, Jim and I as the moderators are not fact-checking the ads ourselves. We're trusting you guys for the, on the yeah, material on that. we're saying very, we don't have any side. We're saying very good on the quality of the. There are some gaps there. That, right. Wait, yeah. Hot Dog, this isn't your time. Yeah, yeah. This is not your time, Hot Dog. You can't sully his ad. <laughs> right, right. You have your own ad and you'll have your own statement. Um, now, do we, do, should Rob give his opening address now? I think so. Yeah. I think so, too. Okay. Okay, so, uh, Rob, the floor is yours. Well, first, I would like to thank uh, Jim and Sam, as well as everyone on staff, for making this happen. Robert Francis O'Rourke is unfit to be our next commander-in-chief. What many believe to be a working-class politician is anything but. Coming from a background where his father was a Texas county judge, which is a big deal down there, and marrying into one of the largest real estate families in Texas, Beto definitely understands a handout. His stance on immigration is to open the borders because, and this is a quote from his El Paso rally, we are safe not despite the fact that we are a city of immigrants and asylum seekers. We are safe because we are a city of immigrants and asylum seekers. But what, what about the immigrants who came legally? Almost everyone in America today descends from immigrants, many of which came through legally. My grandfather used to tell me about walking through Ellis Island and seeing people turned away. I'm not saying build a wall is going to help stop illegal immigrants from entering our country, but Beto just letting anyone and everyone literally walk in is not right. Another one of Beto's brilliant brain busters that was never brought up before is called Medicare for America. Huh. This was, this is where somehow everyone gets free health care, but, and here's the kicker, if you like your plan, you get to stay on it. Where have we heard this from? Obama. Oh, this is great. Also, for a man who is so against big corporations, he sure does love getting money from some of those giant tech companies. During his Senate race against Ted Cruz, Beto had Apple, Facebook, and Amazon executives and employees donating to his campaign. Google's parent company, Alphabet, which I didn't even know they had a parent company, Donated $228,000 to his campaign. Huh? Almost all of the Democratic candidates have said these giant tech companies need to break up. Beto hasn't said a word, probably because he's getting the money. Whoa. Since launching his apology tour, Beto has been going around saying sorry for every little thing from his past. He's said sorry for making a joke about his wife taking care of the kids. <laughs> he apologized for being creative when he was 16 for writing a poem about a cow buff and scrub his balls which is hilarious by the way he said he's mortified to read it now someone who can't even appreciate fine poetry that they wrote is unfit to sit as president in conclusion beto o'rourke is wrong for the america for is wrong for america yeah. because he wants to let everyone in tries to be the regular joe when he's not and gets money from giant tech companies and passes it off as if they aren't the corporations running America today. Thank you. That was great. That was great. Apple that, was, that was great. We fell apart a, little bit. a little bit. We fell yeah. apart at the end, but a little bit. I, I got a little nervous. Tripped on some words. It's, it's like nervous. a third so grader having a reading assignment. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah, I mean, look. This is all I all I know about Beto is what Rob has said so I don't far. Know anything and other than he that. sounds like a scumbag, huh? He sounds pretty shitty. Yeah, it sounds. He sounds real like bad. he's just an, an Obama uh, cutout. Yeah. Was that was that Rob or was that David Duke? Uh -huh. oh, oh wow! Come on, Rob. That was the other shoe dropping. <laughs> um, okay, well, I think then it's time for uh, Hot Dog's turn. Hot Dog also prepared an ad. Yeah. Um, so I guess we should uh, take a listen to Hot Dog's sure. ad. Sure. 
America needs a new leader. A leader who is woke, good with his hands, and a man who is just born to do this. Luckily for us, Beto O'Rourke <laughs> is everything we could ever want. Beto is here to give us free health care, free college, and free trips to Disney World. In fact, Beto O'Rourke is so naturally gifted, once he's elected, we'll be able to get rid of both the House and the Senate. <laughs> so, if you like good things and hate bad things, then come support Hot Dog and vote yes at this year's Great Debato. Beto O'Rourke, he's Jesus, but sexier. <laughs> Paid for by the Bonus Beto Union and distributed by Hot Dog Industries. That's great. Okay. You cannot argue with that. That's great. I'm starting That's to great. maybe shift my opinion a little bit. That's uh, very convincing. Well, Hard bod. Bam. Well, okay. All right. You're getting excited. Oh, but yeah. you. Hot Dog, if you uh, would like to uh, do your opening statement. I would love to. Okay. <clears throat> okay. First of all, mm -hmm. I would like to thank Jen Norton and Sam Roberts, Troy Kwan, Travis in the booth. You guys are great hosts and moderators, and I love you. You guys are amazing. <laughs> right, thank you. Okay. Nice. That's, nice. That's, That's really that, nice. Yeah. 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 I don't think Rob Super thanked cool. me. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> kind of lumped in the staff and did not say I love you. Handsome Rob is a stupid idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he has no political mind of his own. He is, in a sense, a parrot. Just <gasps> repeating the same talking points he hears at home, where he lives at, might I add, under his parents' roof. <laughs> he is a symptom of a much larger problem we face in America today. Dumb assholes thinking they know better. A dumb asshole does not know when to stay shut. A dumb asshole, from time to time, will start leaking shit. <laughs> Just like a certain associate producer who leaks fake news shit into the show prep sheets in the morning. Rob and his family, much like President Trump, bitch and whine about entitlements. In reality, they are the embodiment of entitlement. Rob was born into an upper middle class family as Trump was born into wealth. Part time Rob has a monetary <laughs> safety net that, has, that he himself did not earn. But I will make one thing clear. However, my mic's fallen. It's okay. That is not a bad thing. Nor is it something to, ra to bash Rob and Trump for. I'm here today to bash their hypocrisy. I'm here today to argue that it is the upper class, not the lower, that is filled with entitlement, filled with leeches who are corroding this country now like never before. This country, well, I just repeated the same line. I'm here today to speak to all of you as a fellow American oh. and tell you that Mushroom Dick Don and Part-Time Rob <laughs> are selling you a bill of goods. Their main task this election is to make you afraid of the boogeyman because fear is the only thing they have. Fear is what drives the Republican Party under the age of Trump. For all the winning that they've been doing, which is none, zero winning, they're old geezers and they're angrier than ever before. I don't understand that. You won, you had the House, uh, you had the Senate, and you had the presidency. I, I, I don't understand why you're so afraid of Mexicans, but whatever. Uh, that is why we'll be hearing one thing at nauseum this morning, and that word is socialism. The boogeyman. For Rob and his god emperor, there is only capitalism and the shithole country of Venezuela. <laughs> For Trump and his man boy cuck Rob, there is only <laughs> corporate greed or third world corruption. But indulge me, if you will, this morning, under the nuance umbrella. Americans pay taxes. It is us Americans who pay for roads, who pay for the cops, who pay for schools. In a purely capitalist country, this would not be the case. We would not have schools. We would not have public security. We would not have social security. See what I did there? Yeah. Social security. Yeah. We have a, an economy, and we have an economy mixed... <laughs> We have a mixed economy, excuse me, of capitalism and socialism. This is where their hypocrisy kicks in. What? Hypocrisy. Oh. <clears throat> the president, the president, wait, no, the same people supporting our president are the biggest beneficiaries of social safety nets. They are the ones who rely on social security, which is socialism, and they rely on Medicare. Spoiler alert, also socialism. <gasps> Rob has been trained like a turd monkey to hate good things. <laughs> He has been trained by corporate greed at the very top of the ladder. When Rob goes home, he takes things in half-assed from his parents like a drawer that he is. It may be too late for this no benefits ass having nigga, but it is not too late for all of you. He can say. Beto O'Rourke wants taxes to go to healthcare for all. Beto O'Rourke wants taxes to go to better education funding. Beto O'Rourke wants taxes to go to saving the environment. You guys like the environment? Yeah? yeah. Rob wants to shit on your money and give it to billionaires. 
Rob has bought into the fear. Rob wants a wall not because he thinks it will stop crimes and drugs, but because he knows the truth. He knows that Jim and Sam will replace him with an illegal immigrant for <laughs> cents on the dollar to pay them to do the job Rob doesn't want to do. Mainly hot dog. Be funny on air. Thank you very much. That was great. Now, now, hot dog, just so we have full clarification for the audience, a lot of those T's, D's, and F sounds, yes, well, that was meant yeah. to be T-H? Yes, I, I, have, I have issues what with that. What word did he say? Uh, he said whiff. He said, uh, <laughs> he said, every time he said with, it was whiff. Uh, we did catch one that it was a D instead of a T-H. It, it will happen from time to time, but it, okay. I speak like a normal American. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What was the okay. word we both looked at each other? I don't remember what word. <laughs> we'll have to go back to the tapes, but we both noticed it. Uh, but still, wonderful opening statement. Uh, a, lot, a few more jabs in that one, but I don't mind that. I don't mind that whatsoever. Um, I guess we'll get into the first question. Sure. And this is where we do have to have a 60 second time limit, 30 second rebuttal. I think that that's fair. Um, and we'll start with Rob. Rob, uh, what, what, what is it about Beto suggesting that people have access to health care and education that is bad for America? Well, uh, I'd like to say that is a brilliant question, Thank first you. of all. Thanks so much, man. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> and Thank you, wow. Secondly, Beto saying, hey, free health care for all. Sounds great. Yeah. It's awesome. But where is the money coming from? Beto himself is a product of money. His family is wealthy. His wife, he married into a fortune real estate company, mogul, household, whatever. His net worth yeah, is great. $9 million. <gasps> He's like never worked for anything in his whole entire life. So, yeah, him just saying, yeah, no, free health care. Come on, everybody come in. Uh, everyone can get education. Where, he doesn't know where the money's coming from. I see. Thank I see. Hot do you have a rebuttal? Yeah, yeah, good for him for the nine million dollars. That sounds amazing. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't know what one has to do with the other. Uh, with uh, <laughs> uh, uh Beto O'Rourke wants uh the money to come from taxes. Uh, he wants to bring back taxes to where they were for the upper uh, upper middle class and the upper class, the wealthy. Trump brought taxes down for mm -hmm. the wealthy. Uh, and that's where we're gonna be getting our money from. We could lower military spending, and we can have health care and school free uh, college education for all. Do you want to have a? Do you want to rebut that, Rob? Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Okay, it doesn't. Oh, what was that? <laughs> Hold on. Let me. Get... Uh oh. Oh boy. Uh oh. Oh, boy. oh. Panicking. Did he use panic? Panic. And uh... read from your binder, buddy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's your 30 seconds. Okay. All right. All right. I think uh, this is going to be a breeze. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a question. Yes. It's a Beto question. Yes. Uh, and what, who is this for? Uh, this is for Hot Dog, of course. I see. What is Beto O'Rourke going to do about crime? Uh, uh, great question. Beto O'Rourke hates crime. <laughs> uh,. Uh, I mean, I you, you can enforce it uh, a little bit tougher. Maybe spend money where it should be going instead of uh, just broadly giving. Uh, uh, well, military isn't crime or whatnot, but uh, uh, instead of uh, throwing money where it shouldn't be going, you could just take that money, focus it in somewhere. Maybe uh, help around with community uh, activities or or whatever it may be that may lower crime instead of just hammering down uh, just police brutality and all that bullshit. Beta work hates crimes, guys. Come on. Rob, Rob rebuttal. Okay, well, first off, Beto O'Rourke does not hate crimes. Oh, oh wow! Yes. He signed into office or into law the Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act. Right? Sounds great. Actually, yeah. it has caused a lot of problems for pornographers <gasps> and sex workers in the sex industry. Yes, this uh, he this law says that many consensual workers now have to go back out on the street because they shut down so many of these Craigslist websites that people could vet their, their clients through and everything like that. That's your 30 seconds. Okay. I mean, that sounds dangerous. You don't want sex workers just going on Craigslist and getting their heads chopped off and all. You need some regulation. Uh, these porn stars have said that they do that so that they're protected. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to check the source on that. That might be sure. some Huffington Fox News. Post. Uh, oh, God, God damn it. Good. Good. That's a good, that's a good one. Yep. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, I, I, I have a question for Rob. Sure. Uh, Rob, there was a, a, a theory going around uh, that Beto 
chose to announce his candidacy in Texas the same weekend that a furry convention was going on in Texas. This has led some on the internet to believe that Beto O'Rourke is indeed a furry. Do you know uh, if there is any truth to that statement? Or do you believe it one way or the other? Uh, I do not know if it's true, Mm -hmm. and uh, I do not believe it one way or the other. That's my stance on that one. I don't like that question. You don't like the question. Nope. <laughs> well, that's not how the debate goes, but all right. Yeah, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with furries. <laughs> uh, I myself don't do it, but I, 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 I'm sure I know a few friends who do. And if, if he wanted to capitalize on the furries being out in town and, and hit his campaign, you know, you can't blame the guy. I see. What are you going to okay. do? Okay. Uh, just side note. Sure. During that uh, campaign, when he opened up his everything, uh, what was he standing behind? Uh, uh, I don't recall. Uh, a fence. That's right. Yeah, there's fences everywhere. What are you, what well, are you? he's trying to protect himself from the people. What? No. What are you talking about? Look it up. Fences. fences. Um, I'm sure that makes sense. I, that, but you, he's not trying to abolish every fence in America. Well, we'll see. That. <sighs> it's fake news. I have a, um, I have an international question. That's what important. do you see? Hold on. <laughs> Beto O'Rourke and Frog Dog. What is he going to do about North Korea? Uh, I have not heard of uh, Beto O'Rourke's North Korean stance, but I can tell you that we are a little bit too soft right now in North Korea. Uh, Trump is just going around there and, and shaking hands with a dictator who's, you know, sending Americans back home to die. That is not the image you want uh, us to see or our neighbors across like Canada and, and England and all that. We don't want to be shaking hands with murderers and dictators. I mean, we do that from time to time throughout history, but... So blatantly, like Trump has done. No, we need to. We need to get back to where we were. We need more sanctions on North Korea, and I think I think Beto's going to be doing that. Okay. Rob. Well, uh, unfortunately, Beto's stance on North Korea has not come out yet. But one of Correct. the bills that he signed into law uh, for Puerto Rico after the Puerto Rican hurricane uh, was to oversight and manage the Economic Stability Act. That pretty much said lowered minimum wage for everybody on that island. And has created an unelected oversight, uh, has single handedly taken uh, away young adults' economic independence. Uh, which means who knows what he's going to do to North Korea? Yeah. These people need to be free. They need to get out of this dictatorship regime. Wait, do you suggest we invade North Korea? Is that what you're I suggesting? I not say that at all. How are, how are we going to free them? Well, I think Donald Trump is doing a hell of a job. He's going to free the North Koreans? Absolutely. Okay. All yeah. right. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I would say that Donald Trump's gotten closer than anybody else, right? Yeah. Yep. Right. Cozying up, drugging that guy off. I don't know if there's actually Keep hand jobs. And he's closer. That's not a good thing. Absolutely a good thing. It's not a good That's thing. Why that's the slogan. You want, you, want some, you want some distance between yourself and dictators like him. Hot Dog, I have a question for you. How do you propose, you know, if, if I, I'm being informed that Beto... O'Rourke wants all borders to be open. If that is, that's borders... just not true, Sam. Go oh, ahead. okay. That's if all borders were to be opened, how would we be able to maintain any control over the country? Uh, I don't know where you're getting your, your news, Sam. That Rob, is your, that's from well, his statement. Well, Rob's a Nazi. Okay, He's so lying. He's lying. What does he wow. want to do? Oh, well, Beto O'Rourke has been taken out of context recently. Uh, he did say, and, and, and this does sound bad, but he did say he would tear down the fences that are in the uh, El Paso border. He is not for open borders. He says that the fences do not help, do not lower crimes, do not help with uh, illegal immigration and anything. They're causing, they're costing more money just having to, uh, the upkeep and maintenance of the fences. It's better to take down fences down. He's not, op- he, but there's security at the border. How much money yes. does it cost to upkeep Maintain a, a fence? fence? Billions for- of dollars. How about how about the Mexican people who are illegally coming into this country? How much how much does it cost how the about all people the people for each one of them to live here? How about all the illegal immigrants that are well, the people that are flying in here and then overstaying their visas, which is a much bigger issue than the Mexican border? But that's not what we're arguing right now. How about but what about them? Why is but why is that not an issue with the Republican Party? Because that's Party? not what Beto's stand is for. Because we know that the Mexican border is not. There is no crisis at the Mexican border. No, the thousands there, of illegal immigrants coming up on the border. There are, that there border are, patrol needs a hell of a lot more patrol 
people, men. They do. They, they do. To guard it because so many people are coming in. What they do not need, though, is a wall. They need more people. Uh, uh, there is no crisis. There are caravans coming in here so they could uh, register at the, uh, at the entry points legally like they can. Right. It's not against the law. You could refuse them or you could accept them, but they are doing, they're going by the process. And the bigger issue is people flying in and, and overstaying their visas. I don't know why you guys don't want to acknowledge it. Sounds like you guys hate Mexicans. Do you hate Mexicans, Rob? That is not true. <laughs> okay. Good. I'm Sounds glad. like I it. I just yeah. love America. Right. Yeah. And, and Mexican-Americans? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. As long as they're American. What is it about Beto that has uh, so many, you and so many others in a tizzy, Rob? Why, is, why does Beto stick out from the bunch? Well, first off, he can get money anywhere. His, his father-in-law is rich and <clears throat> will donate Trump? money. That's fine. But we're talking about Beto. All right, thank so, you. It is the DeBeto, not the DeTrumpo. That's right. Um, also, Beto has just constantly gone back and forth on every single policy. Not every single, but a lot of his policies that he signed into law back in 2012 to 2016, even going up to 2018. Just everything is a flip-flop. He goes up to one person and says, oh, uh, please stop. Stop cursing because he said fuck yeah or something like that at one of his campaign rallies. That's not a policy. I'm not. No, 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 but no. I'm saying he just takes everything that every single per one person says and is like, okay, got to do that. I'm sorry I for see. I'm sorry for signing into law the law that says that uh, police officers who are killed by people shouldn't the people who killed the police officers shouldn't get the death penalty. Sorry. He yeah, apologizes for it. Yes, I see. What was the policy for? He's anti-death penalty. He's anti-death penalty for people who killed cops. Okay. And he apologized for that? Yes. All right. Well, that's called learning. Or, or, or this is the issue that we have when, when people change their stance. If, I mean, I'm taking what you're saying, you know, at, at face value. When people change their stance, uh, all of a sudden they're flip-floppers. You know, okay, a couple of years later, they can't change their stance. They can't admit that they are wrong or that they changed their views because they're seen as weak. And this is something that uh, is prevalent in the Republican Party. Uh, just refusing. This is not an, uh, 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 an apology culture, but just refusing to admit that you were wrong or that you changed your mind or but, any of that. If he did that, then good for him. But we're absolutely in this apology culture, which is just obscene. It's just everything that the guy says or has done since he was a teenager, he's had to apologize for. Name five Where's things. the backbone? Okay. Uh, wife raising kids. His psychedelic warlord writings. He apologized for that? <laughs> yeah, he did. He said, and I quote, it was stuff that I was part of as a teenager that I'm not proud of today. And I mean, that's the long and short of it. On a podcast, he said, uh, this is another one. I'm mortified to read it now. Incredibly embarrassed. Whatever my intention was as a teenager doesn't matter. I have to look long and hard at my actions, at the language I have used, and I've constantly tried to do better. That is a very yeah. pussy thing to say. Do you have yeah. Thank you. That is a, I will do you have three more apologies? Day. Uh, yes, in 1991, <laughs> he apologized uh, because he wrote an article while uh, being a Columbia student. He went to a Broadway show, and in college he said, uh, one of the actresses' only qualification was to be seen the phenomenally large breasts and tight buttocks. <gasps> and oh, he shot. said he was ashamed of what he wrote. Wow. And when did he apologize? This was, uh, I think, right in the beginning of the Ted Cruz October 2018. Yes. So how do you well, respond a lot of to the a lot of apologies. How do you respond to this? Well, when you're running, groveling. well, you're running for president. Uh, all the dirt comes out. Uh, I again, I don't. I'm I'm believing you with these these notes that you have here. But everyone knows all the all the dirt comes out. You just got to go up front and just apologize. Right here. I'm sorry. This is bullshit. Yeah. Are you going to let a couple of apologies stop you from running for president of the United States? That was fine. Sounds ridiculous. And you just said that was a pussy thing to say. Yeah. It was a pussy thing to say. But I would not, if I was running for president, I'd go, all right. Sorry. Sorry. So you, sorry. You're saying sorry. you would act differently than Beto. Let's is do this. If you were running for president. No, I'd probably do so the So what's going to happen when, say, Russia or someone like that, he has to talk to Russia? What's he just going to bow down to them? Say, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. To do this I don't know what apologizing for a, 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 a misogynistic comment in teenage years has anything to do with Russia. But I'm saying that he, he has no backbone. Wait. I wouldn't say that. Trump 
has no back. You did on say he's a pussy. You said he was. That's a pussy. That it was you a pussy. Said I said sometimes pussy. it's a. It was a pussy thing. They, you know, you gotta apologize, get out the way, and then handle your business. That's all I said. I didn't say he is a pussy. It was a very pussy thing to do. That. That's fair. Was to apologize. Now, what do you think he's gonna do about all the college debt? <laughs> uh, I mean, I for I myself do not have any uh position where like we should absolve people's college debts. I don't know exactly what his stance is on that, but uh. I, you know, what would you like to see him do? Uh, if you, I maybe going forward, maybe a program to just help people out. Not, you know, if you don't want to pay what for program? handouts, that's not a, not a handout, yeah, handout, not a, not a handout, just a program to help people out. Not, you know, we're not absolving them of Aged their debt. Out. We're not absolving them of the debt. You think it's a handout? Yes. The, the same handout that your president is giving to billionaires ah. could be better served. To help the, out young people the in debt, corporations that hire these people to work. Ooh. Uh, the billionaires. So, the, so the, the 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 tax cuts that they're giving the the rich, quote yes, unquote, right? Yes. So what if they turned around with that money that they literally got, like free money, as you say, mm -hmm. right? Entitlement. Yeah. Entitlement. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, they own a whole bunch of, uh, they have a corporation, mm -hmm. and they have thousands of people working for them. Yes. Right, so with that tax cut, don't you think that they'd put it back into their company so that they could branch out and maybe try and hire more people? History would suggest. Them. Yes, history would suggest that that is not what they're going to do. What they're going to do? Well, how do you know? That's because history. history that's not now. What? Yeah. You, you go by what history suggests. Triple down. Trickle down economics does not work. Billionaires are going to be taking that money, taking it in for themselves to buy their sixth or seventh yacht. They're not going to be uh, uh, adding more jobs into the economy. Maybe they'll, they'll invest in automation so they can hire less people and save some more money. This money is not going to the people. It's going to the rich, and it's staying with the rich. Huh. What do you think, uh, Hot Dog, about uh, the statements made earlier that uh, Beto has actually taken considerable amounts of money from tech companies? I mean that doesn't that that sounds like it could be a major issue. You've you've criticized Trump on occasion uh, for the connection that he has with the wealthy. Mm -hmm. uh, taking money from super PACs is something that has opened. I mean, super PACs have opened the gate for for billion dollar companies to just come in and throw their influence around. That is an issue on the Democratic side and the Republican side. But we're asking about what, Beto, like what, you said. What I am why I am suggesting is that. Uh, if you want to run a campaign, run it more like Bernie Sanders does. Bernie Sanders does. Get money from the people. Have that be have that be your main source of income for the campaign, and don't take or take as little money as possible from super PACs. That yeah. is what I believe Beto should be doing. What was your comment, Rob? Well, I mean, this isn't the, the Bernie debate. It's the Beto <laughs> debate, right there. Boom. He's I'm using Beto. Uh, right. I'm using Bernie's uh, campaign donation plan. And using as an example of how Beto should be doing his. Why is, uh, uh, Rob, maybe you can answer this. Why is his name Beto if you introduced him? You said Robert Francis. Yes. It's a dope nickname. Yes. Where does Beto come from? Uh, his grandfather gave it to him. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's uh, short for a Spanish, like, Berto, like Roberto. Roberto. But, oh, is but he... then shorter, just Beto. They, I see. They call him Beto. Is his grandfather Hispanic? Nope, Irish. So why oh. did he give him that nickname? I don't know. It's cultural appropriation. Probably. Most likely. His grandfather giving him the name Roberto is, is or Robert? Robert? Beto. Is it, oh, he gave him the nickname Beto. The nickname Beto. Sounds like a dope nickname. I mean, come on. Beto? Yeah. I mean, it's not Irish, so. That's truly really culturally appropriated. I mean, that's not cultural appropriation. Come on, guys. It's, it's a nickname. Yes, sure it come is. On, no, come on. You know when you can tell that you've got a strong argument? When the, when voice, you bring, the voice goes high. When come you bring on. it up a few octaves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a great nickname. Oh. Come on. What is it that... Uh, he speaks Spanish. Does he? Yeah. Also, <laughs> my mom. That's also a cultural appropriation. Well, then your it mom needs a Spanish nickname. No, she doesn't. Oh, she's got one. Mom, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Hot Dog, what is it that you're looking forward to uh, about the idea of Beto O'Rourke being the grand president of the United States? Uh, I like the idea of Beto O'Rourke being president because it would mean that Donald Trump is not president. Uh, Donald Trump is the worst president we've had in history. Oh. He is a racist. Uh -huh. He is the most corrupt politician. He lies 25 times a day. Uh -huh. That has to be a fucking record. Uh, it's more than once an hour. Yeah. He, he, out sleep. he hires his family and puts them in positions of power so they could get 
money from foreign from foreign countries. It's all it's all about corrupt. And literally, a turd sandwich is better than Trump. That's why I'm pro Beto. Uh, Rob, why are you so anti Beto? Okay, well, first of all, uh, everything that Hot Dog just said there is not pro Beto. It's just anti Trump. Right. That's that's pro Beto. No, it's not. No, Trump's a racist. That's pro Beto. Secondly, and you say that uh, family is big with the Trumps, right? My family? No, no, no. Wait. Just family in general with Trump giving his people. Oh, right. Yes. Yes. Positions yes, and yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, Beto got all his money from his father-in-law. Yes. We know that already. Right. But he also was involved in, with some shady stuff <gasps> when he first ran for office. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. Where the downtown population was largely lower class and Hispanic. And he was the one to pr pretty much push them out over the redevelopment of El Paso. How do, you, how do you do that? Yep. Yeah. I mean, gentrification is happening everywhere. I don't understand why you're... You're pro-gentrification? Uh, I don't mind my neighborhood getting a little cleaner. A local historian, this is from a quote, uh, said, Mr. O'Rourke was basically the pretty face of this ugly plan against our most vulnerable neighborhoods, meaning the Hispanics. But you're going to get that in every single place in the country. Gentrification is <sighs> happening in, in communities. All of, I mean, I'm seeing in my own community in Harlem. Uh, I don't blame my representative for what's going on for white people moving into my neighborhood. That's just ridiculous. Do you believe him, Jim? That uh, no, I don't think hot dog is so passive about gentrification. Me neither. I don't think I think I don't think I love gentrification. <laughs> love it. Yeah, I think that may also be a selfish point of view. <laughs> yeah. I think he's hoping the real estate value might go yeah, up. If the whitey moves in. <laughs> um okay. Uh do you guys have closing statements that yeah. you'd like to make? Yes. And then Travis, why don't you uh, screen calls real quick just to see uh, if we can get their opinion on who won and lost. Um, okay, well, since, uh, Rob, if you don't mind, I think it would be fair. You went first. Correct. You had the choice. Would you Hot like... Hot Dog had the choice. Hi, that's what I mean. Hot Dog had the choice. So I'll give you the choice for closing statement. Would you like to go close first or close second? Uh, I'll, I'll close first. Go for it. All right. So first off, in conclusion, Beto has been handed everything. He is out of touch with the Amer average American because of that, he's offering promises that sound great, but would be funded by the American people. More taxes is not good for this country. He has no backbone on policies or his actions. Said he won't curse anymore. He has to stand up and say he's kidding if he's kidding or like not kidding if he's not kidding. Really just, just sucks. He has actually a back... Your, your hands has, trembling. Did you did you prepare a closing statement, Rob? I did. I got it. <laughs> it kind of <laughs> sounds like you're you're making it up as you're you go. Just throwing it out there. He yeah. needs to have a backbone with his policies yeah. and stand by his policies. And what is he going to do for the illegal immigrants once they're in this country? Letting everyone in is great, but what happens once they're here? Thank you. All right. Very good, Rob. And yeah. Hot dog. Your closing statement. I did not prepare a closing statement, but I can go ahead and try to wing this. Riff one, yeah. Riff yeah. one. Riff is he probably even better, right? Uh, everything you said uh, sounded completely hypocritical. You've been bashing Beto for for having for inheriting money when your guy has inherited billions of dollars. This is the great debato. Uh, let me. Well, this I, I am. I am. I am calling out your hypocrisy. Uh, uh, you, you've been bashing that you're, uh, would you bash it illegal, uh, illegal immigration? Uh, Republicans love illegal immigration. Uh, they love hiring Mexicans and Venezuelans and all that old South Americans on the cheap. They just want to use fear as a catalyst to get people out to go and vote. They love illegal immigrations and they just need your stupid vote. And that's why they're pandering to that. Uh, when it comes to the wall, spending billions of dollars for an issue that is not a crisis sounds extremely wasteful. Uh, he wants to give bailouts to farmers because of his stupid tariffs. But you have issues with using that money and paying for free health care and free colleges, which would not only help those people who need it, they would help you. They would help all of us. Smarter society, healthier society. We need that. And you want to take that money and give it to the rich. Beto wants to give it to the poor, or at least the middle class, or at least, or at least not, you know, not just tippy top. Uh -huh. You want fascism? Beto work wants democracy. Very good. Very well said. Yeah, very, well, well, well done by both um, by, uh, both participants. Should we go? Let's do a lightning round town hall style. Sure. Uh, David in New Jersey, your thoughts? 
Uh, this guy, Hot Dog, is so off his rocker, uh-huh. it's scary that this is the youth of America. I see. First of all, Mr. Hot Dog, <laughs> number one, it's Mark, hey? it's hot Trump dog. is your president, my friend. Regardless of what you do and what you say, he is your president. The same way that piece of crap Obama was mine for eight years. Now, that's Don't true. forget that. Okay, let me keep going down the line, David. Thank I appreciate you, David. that. You're a great American. Liz. Uh, uh, I was going to wait on Liz for a sec. But we'll get Tom and Philly. Ramon, get these two boring cunts off the radio. <laughs> okay, that's it. Let's see what Liz thinks. Uh, Liz in Florida? Yes, um, I have a question. Uh-huh. Why are you doing this to us? This is Oof. fucking torture. <laughs> no more. I understand Jim is sick and he needs a little rest, but no fucking more. Okay, so both lost in your you, opinion. You're Thank that you, Liz. You're a great American. Liz, Liz you're Liz, saying it was such Liz. a tough debate. You can't decide. <laughs> Liz. Oh, my God. I want to fucking kill myself. <laughs> I want to thank you for your cooperation and just be sure to vote for Beto. He said cooperation. I got a fucking hard on. Nobody's going to listen to you. <laughs> thank oh. you very much, Liz. That's, that's, that's nothing to do with this. That's very good. Sean was constant. Yep. What's what? up, Sean? Hey, I, I think it's hard to pick a winner mm-hmm. among the two. Mm hmm. But it's pretty easy to identify the general population of Jim and Sam show listeners as the losers. <laughs> you guys just don't want to be enlightened. I you guys are not fair. woke. I think that that's fair. Thank you very much, Sean. Uh, Jim, have you come to a conclusion? It's very difficult. I mean, yeah. they both made very valid points. I thought they both did a very good job. And they also both made horrible points. Fascists. Go ahead. You're just saying things, Hot Dog. Yeah. It's fascist, hot Dog bought that shirt yesterday for this. You, yes. had, you had that yeah. outfit for a long time? Absolutely. Good for you. You look great. It's a little tight on me, too. but Yeah, yeah no, no, we all noticed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Tight. Sorry. So do you know, or? It's very close. I'll tell you what I think. I think uh, Hot Dog came on very strong, very hot. Hot Dog had a lot more uh, charisma. Yeah. Hot Dog had a lot more jabs. I wasn't shaking my hand hot holding dog, a microphone. Hot dog had a lot less information. Rob was very prepared in his opening and yeah. closing statements. Hot dog had some good points. He had some good points, but he said it was very emotionally driven. Uh, I think as opposed to him pointing out Beto's record, you were pointing out things that Beto actually did. His record of apologizing as a teenager, or things that he wanted uh, to passing kind. laws, passing laws, things like that. He I had a little bit more information on what Beto had actually yeah. done. There's a. Uh, I found your argument a little bit more ideological and well intentioned. A sweet boy, but ideological. I tell you, for me, I'm boring myself. <laughs> Rob <laughs> won. I think Rob won the debate, and I'll I tell thought, you why. I thought there's, Rob won it, but very close. There's three moments. They gave it to Rob, and it was what Hot Dog said, not what Rob said. Rob didn't win the debate as much as Hot Dog lost, and I'll tell you three three instances that made him lose. The first, and Rob knew it too. The first was when he said Beto. That was some pussy that was move, pussy yeah. pussy move. That no. was a big strike. The second, Beto should run his campaign more like Bernie Sanders, yeah, not strong exactly. And the third, I like Beto because he's not Trump. Like, what else do you need? Rob had you on, on. That, that could yeah. literally be anybody. That that's could be not, any Democrat. That's, that's, not, that's not pro-Beto. That's that, not Trump. That this could is, be any, yeah, this is a great, anyone. That's not Trump. This is a great debate. This is not a non-Trump debate. Yeah. Rob was right about that. Rob didn't come in and attack anybody besides Beto. You want to make it look like Beto is strong, not just that Trump stinks. Because I, I said, so Beto's not good. What about Joe Biden? What about Bernie? What about Elizabeth Warren? It's, it is about, uh, Kamala to be Harris. fair. What the fuck her name is? Kamala to be, Harris. To be fair, it is a lot harder to be on the defensive than it is to be on the offensive. Well, you proved that. You, yeah, you yeah, lost. That's why you it, lost. Was, it was an uphill climb. Well, I mean, not really. You both well, had different perspectives. All you, know, you did was yeah. just try and bash Trump and my family. So, yeah, it was great. Yeah. I mean, in conclusion, <laughs> why don't we congratulate Rob and also Hot Dog for giving Trump four more years? Oh, come on. Four more years. Everybody will be voting for Trump now no. because of the way uh, four, this debate four went. Four years. Yep. Yep. Did I think that make you happy years. if you won? Yes. Hot Dog was the sizzle and Rob was the steak, yeah. which is really depressing that that's what we had to No seasoning. That's, Whatever. That's, that's the really sad thing. Troy, do you think we were off base? No, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so. What do you think, Troy? Uh, I like, like you said. I think uh, Hot Dog really came out of the gate strong, and I was like, "Oh boy, yeah, oh, yeah. this is going to be a good one." And then, yeah, he floundered a little bit. <laughs> Didn't have the facts. Did not have the facts. Didn't have the facts. Wow. Didn't have the facts. Big ups to Rob. So, Travis, you're not voting for Beto anymore now? <laughs> nope. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. What's you your know, take on it, Travis? I think I think Sam uh, was really right. When, you know what sealed it for me? <laughs> What's and that? Troy's right too. Hot dog came very strong out of the gate. Oh, yeah. Very strong opening yeah. remarks, especially compared to Rob's just lack, a lot of lackluster calling. remarks. It was yeah, the only you know thing what? I had. Hot dog said he loved me, and I like that. I, sometimes, that nice. sometimes that you nice. got to hear that. You know, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I do I say love that you. every day I off do. air. I do <laughs> love you. It felt good. It's on air that matters. It it you know what? Hot dog's right. Sometimes, okay. sometimes it's when you do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but gotcha. yeah, when when hot dog said, you know, Beto's not Trump. Mm. You're, you're not That's, voting for you're not voting for Beto. You're voting for fourteen other Democrats yeah. running. Right now, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations, guys. You both. Uh, it was a hell of an effort. Well done. Uh, well prepared. Yeah, and I'll tell you that uh, hot dog's it, disappointed. Hot dog is disappointed. Bullshit. Well, how so? I mean, are, do you disagree with our decision? Uh, uh, that's you, you're holding that up to me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's I, a uh, Rob has a binder and it is, says the Great Debato on the front and it is a Photoshop. It is Hot Dog's face. I believe it's morphed onto Beto's body and head. Correct. Uh, but you left Great Hot body. Dog's uh, awful goatee, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I shaved it. Uh, yeah, I noticed. Thank God. Yeah. Mm. Um, you think it's bullshit, Hot Dog? It's bullshit. I mean, yeah, we're talking about Beto, but we're also talking about who Beto is running for. I, it should have been a little bit more of a Beto versus Trump thing than just purely Beto. What's well, called I mean, the God. Great Debato. It was made very, very clear what uh, this was. Yeah, I guess. He's not, versus, he's not against Trump right now. He's against every other Democrat. Right, yeah. yeah you got mad when, when nomination. Rob was going after Beto. We made it very, very clear. This was all about Beto. Yeah, yeah. All right. He's not yeah. battling yeah. Trump right now. the it Great Debato. Right, right. It's a nice name, but it's, 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 it's harder. Look, hot talk, to nobody's surprise, you fucked up. Uh, Yes. You know, so, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, we should take a break because uh, Danny Tamborelli and Mike Marona are here. Okay. Pete and Pete from television. So we're going to take a break. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. We're going to take a break. Uh, thank you both very much. Well done. Uh, this has been The Great Debato, and we will be right back. Yeah. That was very good. The Great Tobato? Yeah. Who, Hot, whose water is that? I don't, think I, I don't know. Hot Dog was complaining all commercial break. He really was not happy. You could have talked about Trump. No. Otherwise, that would have just been a debate, not a debate. So, his name that way for a reason. Uh, welcome back to Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. Danny Tamborelli and Mike Marona are here. Good. Of course, they achieved massive fame in the 90s, playing Pete and Pete. They did a bunch of movies, Mighty Ducks, Home Alone. My God, here they are. Here they are, Danny Tamborelli, Mike Morona. What's going on, guys? How's it going, man? Good to see you. What's up, man? Have a seat. Every look at everybody coming over. They're following. Hey, you know, you. I don't have a good. Yeah, I don't have a good reach on that. No, that's okay. Everybody sit that now. I see Mike Morona has. Do you only have the one shirt? Because he cut his. Adventures of Danny and Mike podcast T-shirt into a into a belly tee, except then he put on a full Black size T-shirt, t-shirt yeah. under it. Did you lose confidence? Not just <laughs> not just any not just any T-shirt, uh. but another. <laughs> okay. Another Adventures of Danny and Mike the podcast T-shirt. And this under. is this and, is a medium, and this is a small. And for oh, the see. and yeah. for the record, I I made that a belly shirt just you now, did. and you guys might have a great picture of it. I be. didn't know he was coming with shtick at like 8.55 in the morning. There, there might be a video, um, but yeah, it was... Why did you do that? Uh, the first <laughs> shirt. I'd like to know yeah, as why? well. Because you came in, you're wearing a belly tee over the same tee. The first shirt? The first shirt just had a rip in it. The outside shirt just had a rip I in see. it. I was like, I was at I work, see. and uh, I have to go back to work after this, and I was just like reaching for a cable, and it had a snag. I see. What work? Uh, I I work on uh, the I'm a local 52 electric. I'm doing stage rigging on a TV show right Are now. You? Yeah, so it's uh, I'm rigging up old rigging up old uh, shows and. Uh, I just like to hear a union guy that wears his own podcast T-shirt <laughs> to work. <laughs> oh yeah, I've caught, I've caught other people. In case people. you didn't know, maybe I'm trying to do some other stuff here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dude, this isn't my only thing I got going on. Didn't we see? Da- I saw Dave wearing the uh, podcast shirt as well. I've seen a couple of Danny and Mike shirts on the set. Uh, At least was, three. Yeah, you know, I was working on. <laughs> I was working on one of the Marvel's Netflix's superheroes movies, uh, TV shows. I've been trying to get Jim to watch all of them before he watches Avengers. Yeah, every season of every show. No. 
Yeah. <laughs> I really like since he's not contractually you, obligated, he can yeah, talk did, shit now. Did you grow up with any of those with the, any of those comics? Just books? the comic books, yeah, X Men, Spider Man, all that. But, but I, just, uh, I can't care about it. Did you like Iron Fist and Luke Cage teaming up? No, uh, no I, idea who they are. Exactly. So there were sub Marvel characters for you. So <laughs> you stick to the movies and you'll be fine. Besides, like Spider Man uh, Enter the Spider Verse was. Unbelievable. I so. was, I'm just sick of origin stories. I don't care. I know. Uh, Spider right. bit him. I got it. Oh, sure. is that was Spider bit him. That's it. Cut the chase. Uh, cut the uh, chase. Sure. I know it Someone fell in some ooze and now I got some powers. <laughs> well, so, where did you guys do your show? 89 oh. to 95. Okay, so you were there for six years. Yeah. And what, what broke it up? Uh, puberty puberty yeah, yeah pretty much when no, little pete's voice starts to change it's like yeah, <laughs> yeah it's i don't good. know if we can still put him in that ridiculous hat no, anymore. I, I think honestly nickelodeon just didn't know how weird the show was and then they finally figured it out when oh. like uh they stopped the drip they're like okay we're out of there yeah what do you mean you pop an little cool j on the show same, i don't know this isn't good show? for the kids yeah get them uh, out yeah yeah there was something weird uh, uh if you go back now as an adult and watch pete and pete you kind of figure out how uh i guess subversive it was, oh you know what God. I mean? Yeah. Like you're like this wouldn't. This, there's no way this flies. <laughs> you look at kid shows, right? And you look at like what's on the Disney Channel and even Nickelodeon. It's these kind of big, bright color, overacting, wacky adventure. Laugh at mom and dad. Ha ha. Boom, 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 boom. Spring sound over here. But, but. and then you turn on Pete and Pete, <laughs> and it's like two kids in Jersey, <laughs> like hanging out with Iggy Pop and yeah. Well, they had like so there was an episode called Field of Pete, which is like a baseball episode, and I'm just like a shit talker, you know, like a catcher would be doing. He's a and he's like a got, bona fide shit talker, a bona fide shit talker, and like one of the one of the shit talking was me like with a big sign pointing to a horse and saying that's how you turn a colt into a gelding. I didn't fucking understand what <laughs> but, that meant, but, they sh- but, but all they the shot- people were laughing, and I was like, oh, I guess it's funny. But because it was Nickelodeon, they shot it from behind. They just they have a shot oh, of right. him. Pointing to the evil. Yeah, they don't we couldn't even get show a chart it. like yeah. that. We couldn't get a chart like that on the air. You know what I mean? So there, there had to be an angle that was just him, like. But they left tapping, the line in. Tapping yeah, the, oh, they left the exactly. line in, and there was a whole so, scene. The so whole, you could do your work for yourself at that point. You know what I mean? There were. Yeah. There the was whole, a whole scene. Well, the, the whole thing was that the our manager like was addicted to these orange Lazarus, like you know, orange uh, cold drinks, and he. They turned it into like a 60s psychedelic like <laughs> trip. Like all the kids get brain freezes and then it turns into like the gyro. Mesmerizer, the mesmerizer like, lens everyone's comes like, on. And... Like kids are like running up. And right. I don't know back, how that got that past standards, the biggest, but it like. That was probably the biggest debate that Nickelodeon oh, had sure. over one of our episodes. Because you sure. go back and watch now. Like everybody remembers that episode as a kid watching it and it's like, yeah, they love these orange drinks. And you go back and watch <laughs> now and you're like, this is literally <laughs> all drug is, references. Yeah. This oh, is yeah. just <laughs> drug references. The kids are on drugs. The adult with entertainers on kid shows that the Muppets used to do that yeah they would have these weird oh, yeah, adults different just yeah, to try John, to get the adults to well, watch John, Den- John Denver you know maybe uh, Paul Williams yeah didn't there were a couple you're gonna of go, not you gonna symmetrical go with John Denver is the guy to be subversive on the Muppets but I'm saying like there were not there was some asymmetrical because he looked like Janice but <laughs> you know what I mean there were like one there were the ones that were logical choices and then there were ones that yeah kind of didn't make sense but then, but then there's great easter eggs when you go back and you see Morgan Freeman in old electric companies right. and stuff like that there's there's some really there's some good treats in the kids shows so mike does it did it at any point and i guess i could ask you the same question diddy but mike like at any point do you kind of give up on the idea of oh no people are only going to know me from one thing because i would assume at one point you're like oh my god that's the guy from home alone then at another point you were oh my god that's big pete and then later on when you were doing the what, what were they commercials for ameritrade oh yeah is that Ameri- right when yeah. you were like the slacker in the ameritrade commercial yeah, those are the ones they were i mean that was a national campaign that went everywhere yeah cable, like big cable tv a lot of people were talking about it yeah and everybody who didn't know you from either of those two things was like oh yeah that's uh stewart from the ameritrade so <laughs> yeah those are total those are way different slices of like a demographic or just like people in different generations and it's kind of nice the way some of them sort of overlapped people who watched both you know home alone pete and pete and these ameritrade commercials but recognized that I was a kid who was an accessory to murder in Law and Order, <laughs> and I was the only one. I was the only one who did time, even though Rob McElhenney, Mac from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, uh-huh. is the one who actually killed the guy. What? I'm the one who did time. That's bullshit. Spoiler. That's horrible. So when people come up to you and they're like, "Oh, I recognize you from somewhere," 
do you try to fill in the blank for them or do you just make something up? I my stock answer is, did we go to high school together? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it turns and it turned out that uh, like the accountant on the job that I'm working on right now is from South Ozone Park. He's from not too far away. But isn't from it nice when people are like, well, I, where do I know you from? And you never want I never want to say. Wanna I'm see like, yeah. I come here a lot. Because yeah. yeah. how douchey would it be if you're like, well, I was on a TV show. No, you like no high school. No, you let them do the work. Don't you remember? Yeah, you let them do the work. But yeah. I, you know, I went. To, I went to high school in New York City, so there's maybe people around that I recognize from back then or whatever. That if, makes sense. And if people are struggling really hard, sometimes I'll just sprinkle a little fairy dust and just tell them, just let it out. You do. So very rarely, but it has to be like it's been 15 minutes, and this guy's walking back again. <laughs> like, okay, I guess. All right. What, what what do you want? How I, how old are you? <laughs> I can like pigeonhole that's, a little bit. That's true. What are you? Dan's, Forty years old? Okay, Dan's definitely base, Pete and Pete. Yeah, dance fan base can be. Uh, I think dance fan base has great slices as well because yeah. you have the Pete and Pete fan base. Yep. You have the Arnold and the Magic School Bus fan base. Sure. You have. Right. The Grand Theft Auto Five th fan base, which could That's have been much. the Arnold the Magic School Bus fan base, grown up, and the all that kids as well. <laughs> right. So he's he's all over the place. I really here's, like. Yeah. Thank you. Read my IMDb. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What's great about Danny's character because he did he was in GTA Five, and I, I you told me you're doing something. You said I can't say what oh, it is yeah. beforehand uh -huh. legally. Legally, right. legally. Now I can say. tell you whatever the hell you want to know. But yeah, game's been out for like five years. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that NDA has like. long been ripped up. <laughs> <laughs> but you turn on the game, and he's like one of the main characters. And you don't even have to go, I think I recognize that voice, because they designed the character yeah, to look they, like you. Yeah, they like put me in a room, and they did like the 3D, 360, whatever, capture. How does that Looks feel? Looks like me as a, just, you know, more thugged out. Did you, on, were you nude for that, or is Lycra? No, were you no. like Lycra? <laughs> no, but I did, you know, I have my, oh, I wear the yeah. same four pairs of jeans always, like, I don't have other clothes. <laughs> And they put me in like, okay, we're gonna put you in these outfits. And I, they put me in like a pair of like slacks. Yeah, when's the last time you wore corduroy? And I was like, I don't Serious know. Serious question. <laughs> when is the last time you wore corduroy? In 1997. Okay, <laughs> just, so we, just so we have a baseline here. Okay. okay. And uh, the pants didn't fit, and the guy was really mad. He's like, I gave you, you, you gave me your sizes, and I was like, dude. I don't know. These are the same jeans I've been wearing forever. Maybe they just grow with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> but they figured out a way to make sure that I still had slacks on that fit in the game. So everything was fine. I put them in the, fine. I put them in the freezer. I don't want <laughs> Everything's them. fine. Yeah. How are you humiliating when the guy, your, your pants don't fit? The guy's angry at you. Yeah, I know. And you're like, uh, well, you know, uh, what can I, I what can I say tag. to you? I read I off the tag to yeah, you. I, I, read the, I read the jeans to you. What do right? you, want? you know, the, uh, We've come a long way from me buying husky jeans when I was like nine. Now you're a medium. <laughs> Can you 36 play? 30s, bro. Yeah. Can, Can you I play, play Grand Theft Auto? Can I play it? Yeah. I have played it. I'm not good at it. I fucking suck. I tried yeah, it. It's, it's terrible. It's, yeah. yeah. Well, you're probably not. I don't know if you know the level that we're talking about. We watched Jim play. And uh, he threw the remote and gave up on it <laughs> because he couldn't get out of a parking spot. Yeah, I yeah. was back, back into a I fence. Mean, I don't blame him. Oh, you Austin powered yourself. So. He did, exactly. I need, <laughs> I need Sega Genesis, three buttons, and a you know, four-way control on one side. And Madden, that's, that's, Madden, that's what I need. Madden, a little B was spin move was my uncle's always, always, their always response to anything. And coming at you, little B. So you guys did. I mean, you said you, you hit the 90s. These are, these are great times for us right now. Everything's good. And you're like, you know what? Let's just stay here. Let's be great at Sega Genesis. Let's just <laughs> yeah. be, let's, <laughs> let's embrace this period of uh, our lives uh, and take it everywhere. I, I mean, you know, there was a limit to how far you could throw controllers because they had used to have wires. <laughs> right. and now you could throw. Now your frustration could go as far as gaming online. Yeah, right. you know what I mean? you you are, could, and that's why it, Vizio yeah. makes so much money because people just throw shit oh, at their screens. Vizio and, and yeah. Sony are teaming up to make games more frustrating <laughs> to, to sell, sell more, more, sell more controllers <laughs> and TVs. So you guys split after ninety-five. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I, uh, he went to college. I, I took me an extra year. I, I hung around the city and like ate burritos and played soccer and graduated and went to college. Were you auditioning for other stuff? Yeah, my, uh, the last thing I did right before I went to college was, uh, the episode of Law and Order. How hard is it to go to college after you're on TV all those years? I mean, isn't it hard to get back into normal life? Uh, my first friends that I made at college was all people who wanted to shave their heads. I showed up with a weird haircut. <laughs> <laughs> when I got to college, right. so it wasn't it wasn't that tough. 
Um, I mean, Dan might have a different experience, but I think he, he's also, you know, a kid who went there with his wits about him. I took a year off and then I went to college. So it might have been a little bit different. I, uh, I was 19. I just went to public school my whole life, so I was always just around normal kids, and I my parents made me play baseball, and so, like I was securely grounded you on in Chris like, Christie's team. Wasn't he your manager? Get out of here with that crap. <laughs> just checking. Who wants to talk about that guy? Uh, I moved in fifth grade, and I was like, Pete and Pete was like the middle of shooting, and I was still the new kid, so I got shit on. And so I made friends by being like, well, we shoot in New Jersey. I live in New Jersey. Let's all go on a field trip. Got them as extras on the show, class, and then I got friends. Class credit, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, sure. I don't know. It's fifth grade. You get class credit for <laughs> yeah. that. I don't think it was happening yet. <laughs> <laughs> that is smart, though. You're just like all these kids that pick on me. I'll yeah, just like put you, you know you what? Be yeah, you want to be show? on my TV <laughs> show? Oh, now we can be friends. Cool. <laughs> let me, and I'm let, still friends with most of them. <laughs> let me explain. Let me explain the divide. Yeah. I made some friends with some South Orange kids. Yeah, this is a '90s, and I would call them on the phone. Uh huh. And my mom at the end of months was like. Who the hell are these numbers in New Jersey? Because uh -huh. there were there were long distance phone calls on the phone bill, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Somebody must have made the numbers, right? And she called the phone company to complain. <laughs> <laughs> there were like forty five minute calls. I was calling kids in uh, like girls in South Orange to talk to them. See, that he was at the age where he was getting girls' phone numbers. Ooh, we're, we're talking about like you know, I'm thirteen at this point or something like that. Good you for know? you. When, That's when enough. The, Good for the, you. But. No, when the job first started, the first thing we did the first day was like, I'm running through a sprinkler with my little skinny bones, you know, bathing suit. First day. And I haven't worn off with my, my belly shirt. <laughs> Do you find it difficult when you're like, uh, you, you shoot things, for instance, like uh, you shot a thing with President Clinton while he was the president, right? Sure. Do you kind of sit there as it's happening? Right now, you're an adult. You're grounded, you're mature, you have a real job, you're a person who understands how people are. But back then, when you're shooting a thing with President Clinton, is there a part of you that goes like, oh, I'll bet like, maybe we'll stay in touch. Like Maybe I'll be friends with President Clinton after this. <laughs> Did you get his Pro phone number? Yeah, pro <laughs> probably we'll be buddies after we're done shooting, I think. Junior, junior year of college, uh, I'm out of, the, I'm out of the, the wild boys and I move into like the more mature apartments. My roommate is working on the Hillary Clinton campaign. My roommate volunteers for the Hillary Clinton campaign. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. This stuff is happening at the same time. It's 2000. They're going right into the election. So he gets like a background check and all that stuff. And... It like never, it never came up that both of us had met the Clintons. It didn't. You didn't. Never. Say, you didn't never say came, Never came up. Like you know the famous commercials things that I did. I was also in his a video yeah. with him. We did my a college, skit together. My college yeah. roommate never came up. White House correspondence dinner. Ever yeah. heard a of little it? thing? Yeah, a little. Your, it's your cousin Marvin White House correspondence. <laughs> uh, it was a good time. Um, I really like. I choked on my chance. My friend has always been like a nuclear uh, disarmament activist. And I choked on my chance to talk to Clinton about it. Be like, stockpile stewardship. Take it seriously. Let's take it easy. Let's cut back our nuke. And like, I, did, I, I figured I had 15 seconds How to say that. How old were you when you shot with him? 2000. So I was 23, turning 24. What'd you shoot? Uh, like a takeoff of a parody of the commercial that I did for stock trading where I'm just like teasing him in the Oval Office and then we shot a couple of other sequences Come on, in the White the, House. Tell, tell the good story though. Which one? The, the, who, who ate he your sandwich? Oh, he put so a cigar got, in you? So, yeah, there's no <laughs> that's cigar. The good, that's the real <laughs> good story. Oh yeah, you gotta you, <laughs> check us out on our premium channel. <laughs> um, he was in Ken Starr's report, in I fact. I got <laughs> redacted as, with my full name. There, uh, I, I missed my, I missed my flight to DC. There's an airport right next to the college. SUNY Purchase is like bounded by an airport. I missed my flight. Why? So I, I was talking to the guys who worked at the airport because of my, we, my documentary class was three people, my girlfriend, her roommate and me. And we did like a fake documentary. We did a documentary about something at the airport and got to meet all these people. It was my first trip back. So I had to take a $60 cab ride through DC. There was only two gates at the airport. And the both flights were going to DC, luckily. <laughs> and and uh, they gave me like a chicken sandwich or something like that after I got there and bought me, you know, fake clothes to look like this character. Nobody had thought about this stuff. I left my chicken sandwich on a chair at like this height, and the president's uh, chocolate lab buddy ate my sandwich. 
Oh, you made the you probably made the dog sick. Yeah. <laughs> can only it's help. funny he puts dark yeah. chocolate he puts dark chocolate in all his yeah, chicken yeah, sandwiches. <laughs> How bizarre, right? Chickadee Choco. <laughs> How long did you shoot with him for? Uh, I would say most of the time was spent waiting for him to get from place to place. I was there for a few hours, but probably like time with him in the room was probably like twenty thirty minutes total over the over did, all of the locations. You do know, they did, prep you like don't make eye contact? I Don't call too, him Bill. I, I didn't get too much of that at all. I really didn't get any parameters. Um, the director was uh, Phil Rosenthal, who had created uh, Raymond, every, yeah. yeah, Everybody Lives Raymond. So he, um, you know, he's brief and very, you know, good about what he wanted. And I like, I did a dance, and he was like, "Okay, now do the dance that we're all familiar with from the commercial." I, like, I was trying to do, I was trying to do a little, uh, a little improv there for in, in the. Uh, hey, you, uh, at that down, would you add Pennsylvania? <laughs> yeah, he's like, go back to you know. But he, but, but the way he did, go it, ahead and throw the catchphrase at us. But the way, <laughs> but the way he did it was really, really, really good. Um, the catchphrase, "Let's light this candle." Um, I first heard uh, Dan Tamborelli say it in an earlier oh. episode of Pete and Pete. My mom texted me the other day. She's like, "Did you know John Cl Glenn said let's light this candle when he when he did a spacewalk or something when he went around the the world?" I, I feel like, like it's a pretty general. Phrase to use. I Let's light this Tam candle. I think he got it from Tamborelli. So I think sure. we're, we're I mean, both, I'll take, we're both I'll take it. I'll take yeah. the credit. Uh, John Glenn, uh, son of Ohio, <laughs> passed away, right? Not too long ago. Did I think he was an dead. astronaut. Yeah, yeah, I think John was. Glenn's dead. Yeah. Um, the right stuff, I think, was about John Glenn. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, I would. I would think that you you have to believe that that's a phrase that everybody uses because otherwise your partner over here owes you a lot of money. <laughs> because that's True not that. that's yeah. not that cool. What what happened there? But yeah, I mean, he totally um, modeled his loudish behavior on me for Grand Theft Auto Five. So I think okay, it's kind so, of a it's like oh, a, it's yeah, a wash. Oh, it's a man. wash. It is a wash. It's yeah. a wash. I had to practice all the words that I can't say in real life that I get to say in the in the video game. Did you get and in I trouble? Just, did you get in trouble for that? No, I didn't get in any trouble for it. But people like to remind me that I say, you know, inappropriate things. On, yeah, on Pete and Pete, were there ever like, um, little Pete insults that like, on second thought, they were too racy? We gotta cut that out. No, not stuff. really. Like, like, they thing, get to like, say like, weird things to people, like, suck chowder, jerkweed. Yeah, his <laughs> little like, Pete insults you know, have been a really ones. good part of our Bite live. my scab, blowhole. Our live show has been a lot of fun. This nostalgia personified stage show has, uh, in, in the past, we featured uh, things where Dan would read little Pete insults from the, and we had people uh, come up and read them as well, right? We had other yeah, people. Co I would coach people. Yeah, you coach. Do, you would, it. Like, you would do coach it louder. Audience. Do it softer. Do it like you care. Yeah, he would coach Mostly. audience members on how to get like a real little Pete insult out, make it really guttural and whatever. So, what is he got? What is the live show? What exactly is it? So basically, we took the live show that we were doing, or the the podcast that we were doing, we turned it into a live show that had a guest and was similar, like talking head stuff, and then we decided to like take the more like we took it out of the audio basement. visual aspect of it so it's like a real show we took it out of the basement of union hall because that's yeah. where our stage yeah. show originally right. was in right. brooklyn and we had cool audience participation and and guests come up and stuff like that and there were games i came up with a not so successful game called operation cornhole com yeah combining cornhole and the board game operation i mean it sounds good yeah on paper on right, right. Yeah. But in and reality, it looks good too in but reality, in reality it's not it's not the best he so. made he made the little you know the cutouts are too small and you got to throw like tide pods, tide pods at them tide pods it's, yeah. i see kids so we'll, are eating them maybe you'll see yeah. that you run maybe out you'll see that in the next iteration of the stage show whether it's nostalgia personified we did a 90s night earlier yeah. uh, last year when did you basically just show we show video we'll We'll, we'll talk shit on each other's performances. We because Pete and Pete started out as these little tiny like sixty, 60 second, second vignettes, interstitials. They were interstitials. Very good technical right. term. Yes, thank you. Very good. This guy's thank been you. on top. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. I'm industry. Yeah. So we show like we show a few of those and like pause them in parts and, he and makes talk fun about of my what's going on. And, makes fun uh, of haircuts. Yeah, and, uh, good stuff. And we just is... we ball bust and then we do like some like improv -y stuff. Like we'll do PSA things where. We'll take two things like, you know, uh, littering and the dump and have to make a PSA about it or something. So when did you decide to just dive headfirst into the nostalgia of all this? Like, there's no, we're not, let's not run away from this. Let's embrace the fact that people love this stuff. We saw how many seasons Fuller House was getting on Netflix. <laughs> so we're like, we can monetize a tiny percentage of this into right. heavy metal t-shirts, which has been our strongest seller on the last tour. A lot of fun. Heavy uh, metal t-shirts? Yeah, our producer, Jeremy, uh, came up with this uh, black and white design, and I was like, make this more metal. Okay, make it a little bigger. I, we went back and forth. And it, was, it, was, it was kind of very popular. We, ba last we Basically, we did like a 20-year anniversary thing that happened at the Bowery Ballroom, and we did one at the Fuck Yeah Fest in L.A., and people just really seemed to like it, and they 
they freak out that we are still communicating alive. with each right, other still alive. alive too yeah. yeah but mostly communicating with each other and you know i don't know it was just fun it was What's just the, fun to do and then we started doing the podcast because of it and then that turned into doing the live stuff and then how do we could like tour with it without being like okay we're just gonna do the live podcast now and talk to you like we wanted to like have some sort of interaction yeah, with the sure. audience and stuff to make it like you're paying money for an act like something yeah not just get like, something out of it what's the longest you guys went without talking is it during college? Well, yeah, so we're four years apart. So when I went to high school, he went to college, and I we finished... No, I had a lag in there, I'm saying. Right. Like, you, you started your freshman... I started to... I went to college in 2000. And so I was supposed to graduate in 2001. Yeah, you didn't graduate. No, you did not graduate. I'm the only, no, I I the only I Pete be, that graduated from college. I thought I would, yeah, he's got a distinction there. I thought I would, <laughs> I thought I would go to Japan, Y2K would happen, and I would be a novelty act. You thought that, that was, was that really that was my thought? career plan. Y2K was a big yeah. deal, that was man. my real plan. Like I was class of 2001. I started in 97, uh, fresh off the Law and Order murder, and, <laughs> and like I yeah I figured like I sent my uncle was like into comic books and stuff. My uncle who got me originally X Men classics and stuff like that way back in the day into uh, Japanese stuff, and we ended up visiting Japan. I made a couple Japanese friends and. I went back a couple times. So you thought like, Y2K was going to happen? Yeah, and I would, and I would be ahead of the wave. Right. You know what I mean? Well, why I would, does going to Japan make Y2K okay? I because, exactly. like, I figured America would get effed, so I would be safely away. Like, I'd miss my family, wow. but at least I'd have, you know, like. Why something. would Japan be safe from Y2K? I don't know because we there was like an island. I, like, I, I, I think it would get away from everything else. You, you know, New York City's an island. I, I Y2K. I saw Billy Joel on New Year's. Was Staten Island or what? No, I had the Madison Square Garden. All oh, my friends, Manhattan, Manhattan all my is friends also were, an island. All my friends were at fish. Doing he, drugs, having fun. He, the prophecy, I had to go back to LA the, the next day. The prophecy of Billy Joel never came to pass, though, because it's 2017. They right. didn't sink Manhattan. No, no. Did you do a lot of drugs at the time? At which time? When we're talking about you, <laughs> Y2K ish? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was okay. college. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah so if I did enough probably... drugs, I really thought that if I went to Japan, I would be fine from Y2K. Yeah, this was, Those this are was the kind logical of drugs in my drug addled mind. My, my dad <laughs> passed away the end of 98, which was my uh, sophomore year in college. So, like, terrible dealing with that the rest of sophomore year and junior year i was like Woo! so right let's so mask everything and that's what? when i met clinton sorry what, what did you <laughs> i went to asia i got sick so the new year is like i fell asleep at 6 30 and they woke me up and they're like hey it happened okay okay and the big japanese thing is to go to the beach and take a picture of the first sunrise on new year's day uh -huh. so everybody's out there everybody's out there on the beach it's like telephotos out to here and taking pictures and i was Sleep. I got like, they they took me to the hospital in Japan and I got all these prescriptions and I call my aunt who's a nurse here. I go, what's this? She goes, oh, that's a, that's a pro, that's like a preventative for Parkinson's. You're taking preventatives for Parkinson's? Yeah. Like, yeah. What is it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I never took, at least you know he's not going to get Parkinson's I never now. took one of the things that they gave oh. me in Japan, one oh, of the well, medicines, but my overall experience in the hospital was pretty good. But so did you, when you... Long. Just like the, I got there probably like the 29th, got oh. sick the 30th, sick the 31st, sick the 1st, like that, and was out of it after. Yeah, it's a, but it sounds like a great your, vacation. My you aunt? Your aunt, did you go, oh, no, oh it was the fact that yeah, you picked yeah. up the hey, phone. Hey, America, America's still there. <laughs> Why'd no, you okay no, that? Yeah, no, it was like, that was like some, um, like a week later because they gave me like these pills and I was like, these look real suspicious I'm i like, see yeah my my flight was booked back home yes i optimistically booked a return flight home yeah. <laughs> so post y2k did you go okay it's time to re-strategize here i dropped out of college you'd already nuts. done that uh, i was yeah. full i was i dropped out of college i went like uh nuts i grew my hair out down to here uh -huh. my hair was long gl glowing glorious hair you can find pictures of him with uh you know braids on either side. <laughs> oh yeah this like for it's the slacker sweet. the slackers i had of shot course, yeah, i had yeah. shot slackers the summer before and why like 9 11 happened and my college girlfriend was like already working and and successful and i was kind of like floundering i was still auditioning a lot but i didn't really know what I, what was going on hey in slackers because i love that movie there's a scene uh where you have a penis puppet yes is that a stunt penis or your penis yeah a guy comes up to me at the rap party and says a lot of people are are crediting you for my work and i go oh that's nice <laughs> uh what's up he's like oh, yeah i did the puppetry of the penis for your okay. for your uh, show and so it was kind of like uh we just shot my half of it you know that day which is just me going like this singing to i, I hadn't worn one of these things before but it's called a dance belt uh. or, or and then 
right, uh, that wasn't ass. good. That wasn't good enough. So I think I needed like a cock sock, which is the yeah. other. Sure. Huh. So I'm sorry to hold this gesture. So yeah, you're really close to Jim, uh, man. Jeez. And, and there, uh, it, my half of it was just me singing down to my crotch, and then they they sung the puppetry of the penis. They elsewhere. threw some puppetry of the penis in there. <laughs> yeah, I'll, elsewhere. See. This was a thing in the late '90s, early 2000s. Apparently, the puppetry and of still, the penis. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think it's still around. I've interviewed yeah. these guys. They, you remember, they, right? Yeah, yeah. We've talked to them. They do all this weird stuff with their scrotum. Yeah, oh, and when we say interview, we mean. Can you do more stuff with your Show dick? And then balls. they do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a hamburger. It was crazy. It's like a, yeah, like a... Uh, what do you want? Two like patties? One patty? Like what are you looking for? An in and out burger? Like what a, kind of you want? I give me animal, st- animal style. Oh, twisted too hard. Hey, does uh, does Cal from Keenan and Cal look at you guys and be like... Whoa. Well, what about the what about me? Why can't I do hey, what man, they're doing? Kel's doing just fine. Yeah, I, I, I feel like doing, Keenan doesn't doesn't, he doesn't acknowledge Cal. Uh, no, they're both they're both now executive producers on the new all that. That's really come nice. Back. Yeah, first yeah. it went Keenan, then it went to Kel. Didn't you? Uh, I don't wow. know what that means. I'm just throwing it out there. Didn't you have a reunion with them recently or something? No, we did a they did like a reunion a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. That's the thing. We run into each other when we do these reunions. And Except for Keenan, I see Keenan all the time because he lives in New York. Yeah, and, and nice I give him guitar guy. lessons. Yeah, you know Jim, Danny Tamborelli. Uh, he was a judge when I was on the Nickelodeon Children's oh, Game gosh. Show. Figure it out. Does this come up from time to time? Yeah. Grudge. <laughs> it's Grudge. Been, something's pop. I don't know if it's. I think it's wrestling fans, not radio fans, that didn't know about it. Because something like within the last two weeks, it's the video has started popping up again. Going wait. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> there it is, and it's yeah, it's it's been like uh, duplicated and duplicated on YouTube. I wish, I wish you had been in a. I was in a wrestling buddies commercial that we show sometimes. We also show like stupid commercials that we were in in the nineties. And I have a sweet, sweet deal with you know Big Boss Man and uh, Ultimate Warrior. And it, it, it's it's a wonderful commercial, but I didn't realize this until we the last second, the last show that we did that Jesse Smollett's in it as well. Is he? Yeah. Does oh. the big boss man like attack him afterwards? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Wow. No, I don't know. I'm just just throw, again just throwing it out there. I got no comment on it, but the information <laughs> the information is there. <laughs> Dan was also uh, Zach the Lego maniac oh, for on, a man. short time, and take that, it easy. That that type of work really tends to like use up the inside of a man. But I was wondering which which do you think it's almost like karate is a hard style and judo is a soft style? Like what you know, is Zach the Lego maniac? Well, Zach Lego maniac very hard style. Wrestling buddies very soft style. You could get yes. hit with wrestling buddies all day and not yes. feel it yeah you choke on legos because you eat them or that's you step true. on them as a dad oh, oh that's really that, my murder that thing right yeah, now it's really my murder i have dad. a young i have a young kid i have a young kid so uh yeah i've been stepping on legos it's pretty bad it's a, it's, it's a pretty <laughs> it's, bad it's yeah, not yeah. a good feeling no, no, it's actually, i don't it's remember my new dad ska band stepping on legos so be, <laughs> you heard it here but you also have to be strong you know when you step on a leg because you, oh, you, you, you can't you can't sell it you can't show it no 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 can't show it unless he's not there right then then it's just curses and profanity. <laughs> you have a kid on the way, right, Danny? I have a kid on the way, yeah, in June. Are, are you excited about this? Are you nervous? Yeah, I'm excited about it. I think yeah. I'm ready. I mean, I live in a one-bedroom apartment that's rent-controlled. I'm not York. going anywhere for a while. Kids so we're going to figure out how to make yeah. that work. Yeah, that should be perfect. It's called lofting. Yeah. It's called lofting? Yeah, yeah I am. I'm putting shelves up right now, you in go. fact. You're putting <laughs> shelves up like Got a Got a nice demon. high ceiling, you know. You make it work. Top floor. Yeah. Neighbor, neighbors in apartment buildings love newborns. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they scream and they cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. know how they're doing right well, you all know night what? that's yeah. the good thing is i have this like 80 year old woman who lives next to me whose granddaughter's in there with a kid right now who was a newborn while i was living there so i just feel like you know yeah you're you, gonna get it's it a back push. it's a push you're just getting it right back it's a push no it's not it's it, it, you don't have to think about it as an offensive it's like you extended them understanding so now they can right yeah i never cursed the kid out that's true i never did you know right I mean? yeah don't think of it as an imposition oh. think of it as well, a friendship thanks for neighbor. changing my mind michael well you're the one who gets reminded that you weren't in the sequel to mighty ducks every time you look in your that's own true i was in the mighty ducks but not uh, d2 but my apartment is d2 so i'm always in d2 which pisses me off yeah the sequel yeah why didn't they call you back well too I've heard, a, asked, I've heard a couple money? things. I've heard a couple things. My, when I was a little my kid, my mom right told me, this no, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eric. My, uh, yeah, they, they said that I was too short because they went to the Goodwill games. And I was, I would turn 10 on the set. So I was a little kid. Um, and then what, is recently. The Goodwill, is the Goodwill games like a roller coaster? I don't you know. Can't get I'm on just it? saying, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs. But recently we did a reunion not too long ago. And the, uh, 
writer said something about uh, m- more diversity and there are too many white kids and they had to That's probably what switch it, it up a little bit. Really? And I got kid. I was like, but I'm the ginger one. Like, I have, of all the white kids, I probably get, I'm the, the minority here. But and, that didn't work out. And Mighty Ducks was prior to Pete and Pete, correct? Uh, it was in between. So that was shot in 91. So it, it had been like vignettes and, and Nickelodeon had given them like a couple specials. Uh, like specials. Yeah, so we, we had done shot, like four. We had shot Valentine's Day and Summer Vacation or yeah. something like that. Because yeah. New Year's Pete, I think. I Apocalypse. do wonder no if way. once the okay. once the seasons start going, right, and Pete and Pete becomes a success, if the D2 people are like, we yeah, we, we had a little pee. We fucked up. Actually, we did. We that's what Stephen Brill out. said to me. He was like, he was like, yeah, I felt bad about it for a while, but then you know, oh, you're doing fine. Pee and pee was good. <laughs> I was like, well, I still would have liked to do it. Yeah, we could do, do better. Just because I'm doing one thing doesn't mean I can't do two. <laughs> yeah, Look no, at Tom right. Cruise for Christ's sake. Yeah, he's doing plenty. I can walk and chew gum. <laughs> he's not doing anything lately though. No, it's it's true. But I think he's choosing that, right? I think if he wanted to do something, he no. He's been auditioning. Nobody wants him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, saw him oh, a, I saw him at an audition. He's he's wearing big heels now. He's trying to be taller. That's yeah, smart. Yeah. Well, yeah. He heard about the Goodwill Games. He couldn't get into Mighty Ducks too. <laughs> believe he's that. Too short. Yeah. The, oh. <laughs> well, I heard he's going to be a part of the Nostalgia Personified tour. I don't know if it's true. It's but true. I heard yeah. Tom Cruise is going to be. It's there. true. You you'll see thir- Thursday. Tom Cruise will be at Space Ballroom in uh, Hamden, Connecticut. Unbelievable! <laughs> unbelievable! I saw like an old teamster from uh well, I used to work on elementary and he looks like Tom Cruise from Born on the Fourth of July. Like the last time <laughs> I saw him, last time I saw him, shaved head, just kinda unsteady, looks like he'll fight you at any time, you know, that type of guy. Yeah, yeah. And uh <laughs> when the last time I saw him, American flag bandana, long hair, and uh, still driving the same truck, but just not for elementary. Well, look, Mike and Danny who at one point portrayed Pete and Pete. It's a thrilling time to be you two and it's a thrilling time to be fans of you two because you can see these guys perform you can meet them in person you can experience the world of 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 nostalgia of pete and pete of home alone of mighty ducks of every, everything everything <laughs> whatever all, whatever you whatever yeah. we decide to program however an hour you, and yeah, a half you slice and comedy it. show yes it's thursday at the space ballroom in Hamden, connecticut and then friday at the great south brewery in Bayshore, New York. Hey, Long Island. Freaking Keep it local. Bayshore. Long Island. Don't miss your opportunity to see these guys, okay? Don't you know, do don't it's, it's a good idea. And if you're around Saturday, we're, I have my band that I've had for 19 years is playing at uh, the Union Hall in Park Slope. Fantastic. What figure I throw it out there. Local. Jounce. Kind of like a chunky rock band. I don't know. Dinosaur Junior esque. What do you play? Say. Play bass and sing. Look like a bass player, right? I got the build of a bass you player. Sing <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, right. oh yeah, bad. I don't. Not bad. That's good. Well, I don't hang around. You know, I don't. I don't do eight balls no more. But, and he doesn't either. You haven't been around to him. Right? Yeah. You've been around a little. You've been, been gone a little while. You're trying to do good fellas. No, I'm been, not. That's sort of what you did, but you yeah, messed you up big me. time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did, and, and it's a it's a tough note it's, to leave on. It's, I, I don't know. You've been away a long time. On. I don't shine shoes no more. And what happened to Mike? He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> I don't. That was that, and there was nothing we could do about it. There it is. You saved. There you go. Danny and Mike dot com is where you go for the podcast. Thank you guys for hanging thank out. Yeah, thank, thank you. you yeah, pleasure, thank you, man. Sam. Of course, very cool. And we will see all of you tomorrow. Yes. Goodbye.